It's time for another audiobook. Today's audiobook is Her Second Chance. Um, this one is the first in the Patriot Peak series. Now, the cool thing about this book is it was actually supposed to be part of another multi-author series, um, which is a bunch of other really great authors uh, who are writing in the Freedom Ridge. Um, but at the time, I wanted to go wide and pull all my books wide, and every other author was still in KU. So we all agreed that it would just be better if I took my idea and made it my own series so that we didn't have KU readers not able to get my book and vice versa. Wide readers not able to get theirs. Um, but a bunch of great authors, and if you haven't read the Freedom Ridge books, I recommend them. So anyway, Patriot Peak um, is a military veterans romance. So everybody in here at least one character in each book um, served in the military. And that's really important to me because my dad was in the Air Force, my husband was in the Air Force, I have lots of friends um, who have been in the different service branches. So this one um, also has another special thing because Mary Beth, who is the main character in this book, is actually based off one of my former students um, who just graduated this year in 2022. And the really cool thing about Mary Beth is she was in my creative writing class and she recently um, finished one of her books. She has several, so hopefully she'll finish more soon. Um, but I helped her publish that. So I'll link that one down below as well. But I think you guys will really enjoy Patriot Peak and Her Second Chance. And aren't these covers gorgeous? Um, these covers were done by uh, Covers and Cupcakes. And she does great work. So I love just how pretty they are. I know some of you like people on the covers and these don't have people, but the colors of this series is just amazing. So hopefully you guys will enjoy the book. If you want to get the rest of the Patriot Peak series and get a discount, you can go to my website, authorlorenahoops.org, and you can put in the code new to you. So N E W, the number two, and then a capital U, and you can save 25%. But you only get to use that coupon once. So make sure that you get everything you want um, with that coupon code. So hopefully you guys enjoy the book, and I look forward to hearing your comments. The Prologue Chance. Chance stared down at the faded, crinkled picture and wondered for the hundredth time if he'd made the biggest mistake of his life. He'd thought when he left that he was doing the right thing, but now, years later, he still wondered. Is that your woman? Chance looked up to see his friend and bunkmate Israel leaning over the side of the top bunk and indicating the picture. She was at one time, years ago. Israel's head disappeared and was replaced moments later by his legs. Then a soft thump sounded as he jumped to the floor and sat on the bottom bunk, next to Chance. She is pretty. What happened? Chance exhaled a sigh that carried the weight of the world in it. I got scared, mainly. We were high school sweethearts, and we had big plans to conquer the world together, you know? Israel nodded, and the empathy was evident in his chocolate brown eyes. He might not understand Chance's exact issue, but he clearly had some demons in his past as well. Anyway, Chance shook his head as the memories came flooding back. Just before graduation, my father announced that not only was he having an affair, that he was divorcing my mother. They'd been together for 30 years. How do you decide to leave someone after 30 years? Midlife crisis? Israel offered with a shrug. Maybe, but it rocked my world. Suddenly, I was no longer sure about love or Mary Beth. I mean, if my parents couldn't make it, then how could I? Plus, there was this burning desire to get away from him. So I broke it off with her after graduation and then joined the military. I guess I hoped the structure would distract me and the excitement of travel would make me forget what I was leaving behind. Most days, it works, but... He let the sentence trail off. But not out here when there is so much time to think, right? Chance lifted his shoulder in another shrug. He knew Israel would understand. Have you reached out to her? Chance rolled his eyes. Dude, it's been eight years. What would I even say to her? I'm sorry is always a good place to start, Israel said with a smile. I messed up usually works well too. 
At least it always did with my girl. You've got a girl back home? Chance was surprised he didn't know this, though Israel didn't often share about his past, only pieces here and there. No, I did, but like you, we broke it off before I joined. I wanted her to be free to find happiness while I was gone, but we were together a few years before we split. It's never easy, is it? Israel didn't get a chance to answer because their squad leader burst through the door at that moment. Gear up, boys. It's our turn to patrol. Chance tucked the picture back in his wallet before returning it to the small nightstand. He didn't need the wallet where he was going, and he never carried personal information on him when they went on patrol. No one in their unit had been captured yet, but it was drilled in their heads to never carry personal information around with them. Pictures, names, and addresses could all be used against a soldier, and dog tags served as ID enough. He grabbed his jacket off the hook on his bunk. Full uniform was required, even if they were just sitting around the barracks, and followed Israel out the door. Ten minutes later, they were inside the armored tank and heading out of the relative safety of the compound. Chance took a deep breath to try and calm his rapidly beating heart. Though he knew they were necessary, patrols always made him nervous. Too many things could go wrong on patrols. Enemies could fire at them. Children could run too close to the tank. And IEDs were always an issue. He'd lost too many friends to the buried dangers that were never seen until they exploded. Before he had finished calming his breathing down, a loud bang filled the air. Though the ringing in his ears blocked any other sounds, his eyes managed to find Israel's and see the fear he felt mirrored in his friend's gaze before gravity seemed to shift on him. His body flew out of his seat and stars clouded his vision as his head rammed into the ceiling. Pain flooded his senses before the world began to gray. The last thing that registered before he lost consciousness was the smell of gasoline. When Chance opened his eyes again, he was no longer in the tank. Nor was he in the field. Instead, the ceiling above him appeared to be green canvas, and the bed he was laying on felt like a cot. A medic tent. He'd been injured, but how badly? His head pounded, so definitely an injury there. Anything else? Hey, Overstreet, welcome back to the land of the living. Israel's Latino face appeared in Chance's vision, his smile wide and genuine. A new cut blazed brightly above his right eye, and dark smudges covered large patches of his face, but Chance had never been so glad to see his friend. Is what happened? Vague memories of the explosion filled his mind, but not only did he have blank windows of time, his head was still pounding. Israel's smile faltered. You don't remember? I remember an explosion and hitting my head, but nothing else. How did we get out? A soft slide of Israel's gaze to the side told Chance there was bad news waiting somewhere on the wings. I pulled you out. I think I took the least of the damage. He pointed to his eye. This cut, a few bruises, but not much more. Must be thanks to my hard head. Chance managed a slight smile. Israel was not only the luckiest person he knew, but he was also a machine. He worked harder than anyone else. When everyone else ran a mile, Israel ran too. If 10 push-ups were required, he did 20. Chance wasn't sure why Israel felt the need to push himself so much harder than everyone else, but he appreciated having the man by his side. Still, that didn't answer the question that was burning in his throat. Where is everyone else? Israel bit his lip and shook his head. I managed to get you out, but I wasn't fast enough to get anyone else. I'm so sorry, but no one else made it. Pain squeezed Chance's heart, both for his friends and for the guilt he heard in Israel's voice. It wasn't his fault, but Chance couldn't believe the news. Everyone else was dead? Tommy, with the bright red hair who had a heart as big as Texas? Nicholas, the transplant from Canada, 
who still ended some of his sentences with A, even though he'd spent most of his life in the States? Simon, the nerdy web developer who was always trying to get them to play his newest game creation? They were all gone? It's not your fault, Is. Unbidden, a tear trickled out of the corner of his eye, and he swiped it away. Men didn't cry, and especially not tough military men. However, these men were like his brothers. He'd spent every waking moment with them over the last few months. He knew Tommy had a wife and child back home, a little boy with hair as red as his dad's. Nicholas had a beautiful fiancé who was a Canadian model. They'd been together since high school, where even with her puffy permed hair and his sparkly tux, they had still been beautiful. And Simon? Well, he didn't have a wife or a girlfriend, but he was the oldest of ten children. His youngest sibling was just four years old, but Simon would never get to see him turn five. I know it's hard, man, but this is military life. Israel had emigrated from Mexico. Though he didn't often talk about it, he had seen violence worse than Chance could even imagine. Drug lords had raped both his sister and his mother and then left them for dead. He himself had been shot at several times just trying to get food for his family. Chance had once asked why he'd joined the military, where he was bound to see the same type of violence. Israel's answer had been simple. America gave his family a new chance at life, and he wanted to give back. Plus, he hoped that he might be able to save others like himself. The man didn't have a selfish bone in his body. Chance nodded. This was military life. Not the side that he liked, but a necessary evil that went along with all the good they did. He would mourn for his brothers, but he could not let grief overcome him. Do you know how bad my injury is? My head is still pounding, so I can't really feel anything else. As Israel's eyes shifted again to the right, Chance knew he wasn't going to like the information. You got banged up pretty bad. Chance clamped a hand on his friend's arm. How bad is? I have to know. Israel's chocolate brown eyes filled with sadness as he met Chance's gaze again. Bad enough that they're sending you home, Chance. Home? Back to his last base home? or all the way back to Courage, Colorado? The answer didn't matter much. The military had been Chance's life for the last eight years. What was he supposed to do now? Chapter 1. Chance Oh my goodness, it is so good to have you home! His mother enveloped him in a hug so tight that he could feel the pearls on her necklace digging into his shoulder. I'm not staying here, Mom. I'm going to find my own place. Chance wondered if coming back here had been a mistake. After his injury, he had spent months at his last stateside base in North Carolina, working a boring desk job and going through rehab. Though he'd hoped he would be able to return to combat once he completed rehab, the military had decided that was no longer possible. And so, instead of re-enlisting for another four years, Chance had opted to walk away from his military career. Then, because he knew few people in the area and had no desire to stay where his failures would haunt him, he had made the excruciatingly difficult decision to return home. At least in courage, he told himself, he had his mother and perhaps a few old friends though he hadn't kept up with many of them. He also couldn't deny there was a small piece of him that hoped Mary Beth would still be there and he could convince her to give him another shot. Seeing his friends and his unit make marriage work even through long deployments and facing his own mortality had certainly changed his view on love. Maybe it wasn't perfect, but it was worth it. I know, she said, finally releasing him but I haven't seen you in ages. She stepped back, but kept her hands on his shoulders. Let me get a good look at you. He felt more like an item at a market that she was considering purchasing than her son, as she scanned him from head to toe. But he supposed he couldn't blame her. It had been years since he'd been home. He'd called the first few Christmases after enlisting, 
but the last one had been spent halfway across the world, and he just hadn't been able to muster the energy to deal with all the hoops he would have to jump through to make a long-distance call. You're as handsome as ever, though you could use a haircut. He chuckled slightly at that. For eight years, he'd worn his hair in military regulation. High and tight was the common term used. But since his return to civilianism, it hadn't been high on his list. Perhaps it was time for a trim. Okay, Mom, I'll add that to the list. But finding a place to live and a job need to come first. Her eyes lit up and she clasped her hands together. Oh, speaking of that, I've been seeing this very nice man lately, and he happens to run the resort in town. He's a transplant from Texas and has a personality as big as the state. I think you'll really like him. Anyway, he told me the other night that he was looking for a manager. Chance shook his head. The last thing he needed was his mother setting up a job for him, especially with her new boyfriend. I can find my own job. I'm sure you can, but I've already set up the interview. I didn't get the job for you, just an interview. The rest is up to you. She crossed her arms and fixed him with a stare that said the topic was not up for discussion. Chance could think of nothing more embarrassing than attending an interview his mother set up for him, but he had no other leads in town currently. Refusing felt like looking a gift horse in the mouth. Fine. I'll interview with him. Now, did you happen to find some properties for rent? His mother was a realtor and an interior designer, and though it pained him, he had asked her to help him find a place in town because living with her was out of the question. Of course I did. I have several places lined up to show you. Are you ready? Chance wasn't sure he was ready to be back in courage, or to have his overbearing mother back in his life, but he was sure he was ready to find his own place. Butch Myers was exactly as his mother had described him. Chance would have guessed he was from Texas, even if his mother hadn't droned on about it as she showed him houses. The man wore a large cowboy hat, a bolo tie, and a button-down shirt. You must be Chance, the man said standing and extending his hand. His voice still held the twang of a Texas drawl, and Chance wondered briefly what had brought him to Colorado. Yes, sir. Thank you for meeting with me. He made sure to keep his grip firm as he shook the man's hand. Well, I'm sure you know Vivian is a hard woman to say no to. Besides, I looked at your resume, and being a veteran myself, I've been wanting to hire more of them. Lord knows the government doesn't always look out for us, even after all we gave. Am I right? Chance hadn't been a veteran long enough to know that answer for himself, but he'd heard complaints from older men while receiving rehab. According to them, the VA wasn't always the best at finding veterans jobs or helping them out in times of need, though Chance preferred to think that they tried. Still, service members helping each other out was definitely something he could get behind. Yes, sir. Butch pointed to one of the brown leather chairs facing his massive desk. Sit. Now, I know about military training, but what sort of management experience do you have? Nothing with anything this large, to be honest, sir. But I did spend many winters working in my father's store. He used to own one of the ski rental shops downtown before he and my mother divorced. That shop had been the bane of Chance's existence growing up. During the summers, it hadn't been so bad, but when the first snow fell and the tourists began flooding courage, his father had insisted he help out in the store as soon as school let out for the day. Homework can wait, he'd always said, when Chance would protest. Weekends and free time had waited too, until the mountain closed for the season. Butch nodded and stroked his meaty chin. Bet he had you running it half the time, didn't he? Chance chuckled. That was the understatement of the century. At one point, his father had been sure he would take over running the shop, and so he'd made sure Chance knew every in and out of running it. Yes, sir, he did. 
He taught me how to order inventory, position the items for maximum purchase power, and of course, how to deal with employees. A large grin spread across Butch's face. Well, it sounds to me like he, along with the military, taught you everything you'll need for this position. What do you say we make it official? Chance wanted to say yes, though this was not exactly what he'd trained for. He thought the position would challenge him enough, but one tiny detail kept his excitement in check. That sounds great, and I would love to work for you, but I have to know, you're not offering me the job simply because you're seeing my mother, are you? A loud, hearty laugh bellowed from Butch's lips. Chance! Your mother is a force to be reckoned with, to be sure, but she does not run my resort or my decisions. In that case, sir, when can I start? Chapter 2. Mary Beth Lucas, are you ready yet? Mary Beth poked her head out of the kitchen and looked down the short hallway toward Lucas's room. I can't find my shoes. Her son's tender voice carried out of his room. Mary Beth rolled her eyes and sighed. She didn't have time for this, but she should have expected it. Losing his shoes or his socks was a regular occurrence for Lucas. Actually, he didn't so much lose them as he covered them up with something on the floor and then never managed to look under that thing. She was sure it had more to do with his age than anything. At least, she hoped. She loved her son, but this daily chore of chasing down his lost articles of clothing or pointing out clothing that was in front of his face was definitely getting old. She stepped into the living room and found one shoe sitting in front of the couch. Picking it up, she scanned the rest of the room, but there were no more shoes. The bathroom, then? Had he taken the other one off before his bath last night? Why he couldn't take them off in the same place was beyond her. But she trudged that direction, sure that it would be there. Sure enough, the other shoe was in the tiny bathroom that served as both his bathroom and the one guests would use, if she ever had guests over. She must have been too tired after his bath to notice it last night. Here, Lucas, she said, holding out the shoes to him as she entered his room. He crawled out from under his bed and looked at her with his big brown eyes, eyes that always reminded her of Colin. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. She set the shoes down on his Batman bedspread. Can you please hurry and finish getting dressed? I need to pack my lunch. Sure, Mom, but can we go to the park today? Not today, buddy. I have to work, but it's almost the weekend. We can go then as long as she didn't get called into work on Saturday. She'd heard rumors that the lodge had hired a new manager. Who knew what that meant? Would he or she honor her schedule? Would she even still have a job? Her job at the resort had been secure the last few years. She'd made sure to work hard and prove her worth. But she'd worked enough other jobs to know that new managers sometimes meant shakeups. She shook her head as she reached the kitchen. No, she couldn't think about that. They were already living paycheck to paycheck and barely making ends meet. There was no way they would be able to live if she lost her job. Thankfully, she'd qualified for a low-income preschool for Lucas. That would help free up a few hundred dollars a month. Unfortunately, they didn't have a spot for another few weeks, so she had to make it until then. After taking the bread and peanut butter from the pantry, she grabbed the jelly from the bare fridge and whipped up yet another PB&J. She was tired of the simple lunch, but it was cheap. A trip to the grocery store was definitely on her to-do list when she got paid again. When the sandwich was finished, she dropped it in a Ziploc bag, the same one from yesterday as they were too expensive to throw away every day, and then added a banana. It wasn't much, but if she was lucky, there would be leftover food at the resort, and she could grab a few bites. She checked her watch as she dropped the sandwich and banana into her purse. Time had gotten away from her, and they needed to head out of the house now if she had any hope of making it to work on time. 
Lucas, let's go. He appeared as she reached the front door. His shirt sported a few unsightly stains, but there was no time to change. At least he had his shoes on the right feet. A small sigh escaped her lips. Come on, buddy. Though she was not sad that Colin was no longer in the picture, raising her son as a single mother was certainly harder than she'd ever expected. She buckled Lucas in, whispering a silent prayer for his safety and her sanity as she shut the door and climbed in behind the steering wheel of the powder blue 1984 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. The car had been a present from her father before he passed, but not one that she loved. He'd said he wanted her in a safe vehicle, one that he knew would protect Lucas even if they got into an accident. The car was definitely big and safe. It felt like a giant boat to Mary Beth. But it had one very finicky habit. On occasion, especially cold morning occasions, which were quite often in Colorado in December, it refused to start unless she popped open the hood and jammed a screwdriver into the carburetor. Her father had promised to get the car looked at when she'd informed him of the problem, but he'd had a stroke two days later and never recovered. Now Mary Beth neither had the time nor the money to fix the car. Whispering another prayer that the car would start, she turned the key and sighed with relief when the engine turned over. After checking the rearview mirror, she backed out of the drive and headed into town. Ten minutes later, she pulled into the drive of Edith Biggs' house. Edith was not Mary Beth's favorite person, nor was she her first choice in a child care provider, but she had been the cheapest in town. Now Mary Beth knew why. Not only did Edith rarely smile, but she felt that it was her right to badger the parents about anything she thought they weren't doing correctly. In Mary Beth's case, that happened to be a lot, but first and foremost on Edith's list was the fact that Mary Beth was raising her son alone. Mary Beth could count on one hand the days she'd managed to either drop Lucas off or pick him up without Edith giving her some lecture on the importance of a father in a young boy's life. Sure enough, Edith stood on the front porch in her faded flannel robe and wearing the same annoyed expression that graced her face every day. Her hands were shoved deep into her thick hips and rollers still resided in her graying hair. Come on, Lucas! Mary Beth forced enthusiasm she didn't feel into her voice as she unbuckled her son and hoisted him out of the car. With his little hand in hers, they traversed slowly up the cold sidewalk, taking care not to slip. Edith didn't believe in salting the walk, and Mary Beth had no doubt she would not chip in on medical bills if someone slipped and fell. The sagging porch was only slightly less slick, and Mary Beth held on to the railing for extra support. She knew the inside of the house was more welcoming, but she was still glad he would be changing centers at the beginning of the new year. As they reached the top step, Lucas pulled on her hand and looked up at her with sad eyes. Mom, do I have to go in? You do, buddy, but I'll be back to pick you up as soon as I'm done today. She gave him a fierce hug and whispered in his ear, Maybe I can sneak some dessert for you tonight. It wasn't much, but she hoped it gave him something to look forward to. Sure enough, a twinkle sparked in his brown eyes, and a hint of a smile appeared. With chocolate? I'll do my best. He gave her another squeeze, and then hurried past Edith with lightning speed, disappearing into the house. Edith folded her arms across her chest and fixed Mary Beth with her signature beetling stare. You know he needs a man in his life. When are you going to get back together with his father? I'm not, Edith. She was not only tired of having the conversation with Edith, but she had no time today. Lucas's father was no role model, and I know it's hard on him right now, but if he's going to have a man in his life, I want it to be a good one. With that, she issued a curt nod and turned back toward her car. Any man's influence is better than no influence at all, 
Edith called, as Mary Beth walked away. She shook her head as she opened the driver's door and slid in. Not only were the words not true, but they were said in judgment, by a woman who had obviously never had a bad man in her life. Mary Beth tried to believe the woman's intentions were good, even if her delivery was lacking. She knew that God wanted families together, but she also knew that abuse was a repeated pattern. Those who saw it at home while growing up were more likely to do it themselves when they got older. And while Colin had never hit her, his words had done damage. That was not the life she wanted for Lucas. For what seemed like the millionth time that week, she sent a silent prayer to God for help. Help with her job, help with her finances, and help in finding a good father figure for Lucas. She knew God worked in his own time, but she sure hoped his time collided with hers soon. After a final glance in the rearview mirror, Mary Beth steered the car toward the Patriot Peak Resort. Chapter 3. Chance Chance listened as Butch went over his expectations. As new manager of the Patriot Peak Resort, he was in charge of hiring and firing, setting schedules, employee reviews, and general delegation to the various departments. The resort was large, with over 100 rooms, an on-site event planning arm, and a spa. Plus, it offered skiing and snowboarding lessons. Though he knew he had the necessary management skills and the ability to quickly learn whatever he was lacking, the job still seemed slightly overwhelming to him. Thankfully, as Butch wanted to spend less time at the resort, he had okayed Chance hiring a personal assistant to help with everything. Butch pushed back from his large oak desk. You ready to go meet some of the crew? He asked as he smoothed down his button-down shirt. Even in the chill of winter, Butch didn't seem to believe in sweaters. Though this was only Chance's second day being around him, Butch wore a similar Western-style shirt to the one he'd had on yesterday and blue jeans. Chance had a hunch the rest of his wardrobe would be more of the same. Though Butch hadn't mentioned a dress code policy, Chance hoped he wouldn't be required to wear dress attire every day. He'd been forced into the same uniform every day in the military. And while he hadn't minded at the time, he now remembered how freeing it was to wear different clothes each day. He was a fan of sweaters, and he'd purchased a different one for every day of the week. It was a small luxury, but one he had become accustomed to, and one he hoped Butch would accept. With a nod, he stood and joined Butch. The idea of meeting everyone caused a knot in his stomach to form, but it had to be done. He might as well get it over with. Ready as I'll ever be, I guess. Butch clapped a meaty hand on his shoulder. You'll be fine. You were made for a job like this. Chance wasn't so sure about that, but when his military career had been cut unexpectedly short due to his injury, he'd had to find something. And Butch seemed to be a good guy, even if he was dating Chance's mother. As he followed Butch down to the conference room, where some of the staff would be gathered, Chance observed the decor he hadn't examined closely yet. After his interview yesterday, he had been too tired to explore the hotel and had simply retired to the room he had rented. His mother had shown him a house he liked, but she needed to get the paperwork together before he could move in. The decor was rustic, yet elegant. Tans and golds were the dominant colors, supported with dark blues, greens, and reds. Chance was no designer, but whoever had decorated the resort had done a good job. It was comfortable and neutral enough to appeal to both genders. Butch pushed open the door to a large, well-lit room. It was clear the conference room could double as an event room for weddings, parties, and the like, as large chandeliers hung from the ceiling and tables were folded up against the wall. In the middle of the room stood a group of about 20 people, all eyes trained on his and Butch's entrance. Chance scanned the group quickly, but his heart froze when his eyes reached the last woman in the group. She had her head down, 
but the color of her strawberry blonde hair perfectly matched the shade that still appeared in his dreams from time to time. Could it be? Could he really be that lucky? Or perhaps unlucky, depending on how she felt? Thank you all for coming. Butch's booming voice echoed in the large room. I know you are all busy and that we don't have everyone here. However, I wanted as many of you as possible to meet our new on-site manager, Chance Overstreet. He comes to us with management experience, and he served our great country for the last eight years. I have no doubt you will come to like him as much as I do. Butch clapped Chance on the shoulder so hard this time that he almost fell forward. Thankfully, his good leg had been supporting his weight, or he might have gone sprawling on the ground in front of his new employees. That would have been a great way to make a first impression. They're all yours, Butch whispered. I've got a meeting with a developer for some new amenities I want to add. Right, thank you. As Butch left, Chance turned to face the group once again. He was used to speaking to large groups of men, but for some reason, this small group of men and women made the nerves in his stomach twist into knots. Perhaps he was afraid they would see through him and realize that while he did have management experience, it wasn't hotel management experience. Or maybe he was afraid his leg would act up and he would start limping, as often happened when he stood for too long, giving him the appearance of weakness. Or maybe it was the woman at the back. She still hadn't locked eyes with him, but in his heart, he knew it had to be her. What on earth would he say to her? He took a deep breath to quell the fears and smiled out at the group. I'm pleased to meet you all. I won't remember all your names today, but I will make it my goal to know you all by name by the end of the week. If you have the time, I'd like to hear how long you've been working for Butch, what you do here, and what you might be interested in doing. One by one, he made his way through the line, meeting the ski instructor, the event planner, a few of the wait staff, and several of the housekeeping staff. He shook their hands and listened to their stories, but with every one, his eyes darted to the end of the line, to the woman who had once stolen his heart and still occupied his thoughts. Finally, he stood before her, and she looked up. Though older, she was exactly as he remembered, with a light dusting of freckles across her face and eyes the color of a winter storm. Mary Beth? Even though she stood in front of him, he couldn't really believe it. The day he left her flashed through his mind. What do you mean you're leaving? She was trying to be brave, but the quivering of her chin and the tear that escaped out of the corner of her eye betrayed her. I have to get out of here, away from my dad. It had only been a month since his father opened up about his affair, but the thought still rubbed him like cuts from broken glass. But why does that mean we have to break up? Just take some time and come back to me. I'll still be here. Chance shook his head. Don't you understand what this means? If my parents can't make it, what hope do we have? I'll probably end up just like him, and you deserve better, Mary Beth. You deserve someone who can love you. Her hand fell on his arm, clamping like a vice grip. The strength of her grip surprised him. You love me. I know you do, and you are all I need. He wanted to believe her, but he wasn't sure any longer. His entire world had just been turned upside down, and he needed time to digest it, time to figure everything out. I'm not even sure I know what love is anymore. This time, she didn't try to stop the tears, but she did wipe them away as they crested the apple of her cheek. You're just scared, and you're running away. The chance overstreet I know wouldn't run from fear. He would face it head on. Maybe I'm not that chance anymore. Though every bone in his body screamed that he was making a mistake, Chance turned and walked away from Mary Beth. The sound of her sobs echoed in his ears long after he left her. She met his gaze, and he tried to read the emotion in her eyes. Chance, I didn't think you'd ever come back here. 
Though her expression didn't change, he heard the hurt and confusion in her voice, and from the corner of his eye he saw her fingers snag the fabric of her pants and twist. His lips twitched as he remembered the first time he noticed her nervous habit. It had been in English class when they'd had to give a speech about their favorite Shakespearean character. She had picked Puck from A Midsummer Night's Dream and had practiced her speech for him at least a dozen times. She had it down pat and could probably have recited it in her sleep. However, when her name was called and she stood in front of the classroom facing their peers, her fingers had found the fabric of her jeans and twisted them tightly until her speech was over. Evidently, she hadn't outgrown that habit. He forced his lips to remain in place. No doubt she had no desire to stroll down memory lane with him. Neither did I. So you work in the resort? He kept his voice low because he could feel the other workers watching them. I do, in housekeeping. Housekeeping, huh? He found that image hard to reconcile with his memory of Mary Beth. She'd been so vivacious and bursting with ideas that the thought of her cleaning room after room monotonously, day after day, did not compute in his mind. Do you like it? She offered a small smile. It's steady work and rewarding. I like making sure the guests have a clean place to stay. She hadn't exactly answered his question, but he could understand why. No doubt, she also remembered the long talks they'd had under the stars. Talks where they'd shared their hopes and dreams for the future. Hopes and dreams that did not include being a maid, or a manager for that matter. How long have you been working here? Two years. I was the office manager for a small firm before I took this job. Honestly, I'm willing to do whatever is needed for the resort as long as it works with my schedule. Though her demeanor appeared mild and mannered, she held his gaze with an unwavering intensity. Clearly, she was as strong as ever. And what is your schedule? Her eyes widened as if she'd realized what she'd said might sound demanding. My current schedule is Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. That works well with my life right now. He wondered what that meant. Was she married? Did she have kids? She'd always talked about having kids. Four, at the minimum, so she could have two of each gender. He'd laughed when she said that and told her that biology didn't work that way. You couldn't just put in your demands. But she'd always shaken her head and said that God knew her heart and he was in control. Chance offered a smile to let her know he wasn't upset by her audacity. I think we can continue to accommodate that schedule. Relief flooded her face and relaxed her shoulders. Thank you, sir. Sir? Coming from her lips, the words felt so formal. Perhaps she didn't want anyone to know they had dated. Or maybe, like himself, she was fighting memories of the past and calling him sir helped keep that distance. There's no need to call me sir. Chance will do just fine. A piece of him longed to hear her say his name again, but she was not going to indulge him. Instead, she lifted her chin and stared pointedly at him. You're my boss. Considering the circumstances, I think sir is not only fitting, but deserved. Don't you? She was still angry at him. He should have expected it, but it jarred him nonetheless. Mary Beth had always looked at him with love in her eyes. Now, he saw nothing. It was like she had built up a wall to keep her emotions hidden from him. He could understand it, but he wasn't sure he could work with it. He'd have to find a way to get her to forgive him. Soon. Chance nodded to end the conversation and stepped back to address the group once more. I look forward to working with all of you. Please know that I have an open-door policy. If you need anything, don't hesitate to come see me. Chance watched Mary Beth exit the room with the rest of the staff. She kept her back straight and her head high, and as much as he wanted her to, she did not turn to look at him. With a sigh, he walked to the rest of the room. Butch had given him a brief tour, but he figured he could take some time to check out what the resort had to offer. Maybe it would give him ideas on what to do about Mary Beth as well.
After perusing the conference room, Chance headed toward reception to meet the current clerks and observe the layout. As he turned the corner, though, he wished he hadn't chosen this moment to appear. The assertive voice of his mother carried across the room. What was she doing here? I know he's here. He just got hired as the manager. Can't you just call him on one of those phones in front of you? With a sigh, Chance approached. He had so much work to do, he didn't have time to entertain his mother right now or deal with the 20 questions he knew she would pepper him with. But perhaps she had the paperwork for the house. That he could make time for, especially since the moving truck was supposed to arrive today as well. Mom, what are you doing here? Her face brightened and her heels clopped across the floor until she reached him. You didn't think I wouldn't come see you on your first day at work, did you? Was it rude for him to say that's exactly what he'd thought and expected? Probably, but he was nearing 30. He certainly didn't need his mother showing up at his place of employment. I wanted to make sure you got settled in okay and that Butch was treating you right. Her eyes darted around the room. He's not here, is he? Chance sighed. No, Mom. He said he was meeting with a developer. How good was this relationship if his mother didn't know that? She'd said they'd been dating for a few months, but his mother was prone to exaggeration. So a few in her book might be just over one. Thanks for stopping by, though. But please tell me you didn't come here just to check up on me. Her smile widened and she patted his chest. Of course not. I also came to bring you this for your first day. She revealed the hand that had been hidden behind her back and held up a generic white mug with the words World's Best Boss stenciled in black on the side. Chance stared at the mug, slightly confused. Thank you, but you don't work here. How do you know what kind of boss I'll be? She rolled her eyes and placed the mug in his hand. Because you've got good genes. Your father may not have been a great husband, but he was a good manager. Plus, I'm good at what I do. Modest, too, Chance thought, but he kept those words to himself. I know you'll do great, his mother continued. Besides, you can pretend a former employee gave it to you. No, he couldn't, because that would be lying. Something Chance prided himself on not doing, and something he thought his mother would abhor, especially after his father had lied to them for so long. However, his mother seemed to think that white lies were perfectly acceptable. Well, thank you. It wasn't that he would never use a mug. But having his mother give it to him just felt awkward. In fact, having her here just felt awkward. Are you going to show me around or what? As tempted as he was to utter or what and see what she did, he didn't need the headache. Although he was pretty sure Butch would have already shown her around, giving her a tour would be the fastest way to appease her and get her to leave so he could concentrate on work. Besides, he had been planning to give himself a tour anyway. Sure, come on. Chapter 4, Mary Beth So, did you get to meet the new manager? I heard he's hunky. Mary Beth looked up at Becky, her partner for the day, as she removed the sheets from the king-sized bed. Yeah, I met him. That was rather an understatement, as they had dated all through high school, and she'd thought they would get married until he decided he had to get out of Courage, Colorado, and had broken up with her. And, come on, don't leave me hanging in suspense. Is he nice? Cute? Becky was one of the younger maids and as boy-crazy as they came. Mary Beth didn't mind being paired up with her, but the girl talked about a new guy every time they worked together. Now she pleaded with her baby blue eyes for Mary Beth to spill. Um, I guess he's nice. I didn't talk to him for that long. But at least he doesn't seem to want to shake things up too badly. Of course, she wondered if that would apply to her. 
Now that he knew she worked here, would he want to get rid of her? Great. Nice. That's a wonderful description. With that command of vivid imagery, you should be an author. Becky rolled her eyes. Now, come on. Tell me if he's easy on the eyes. She wiggled her eyebrows suggestively as she balled up the sheet and tossed it in their bin. Does he have broad shoulders, a trim waist, visible muscles? A soft heat crept across Mary Beth's face. Chance's handsome features had been seared in her memory for ages. The chiseled jaw, the cleft in his chin, the chocolate brown eyes. And though he was older, he certainly wasn't any less handsome. But he'd broken things off with her. He'd told her she would be better off without him and left. She'd spent months hoping he would change his mind and staring at the phone, willing it to ring. But it never had. So she'd moved on. But she definitely hadn't been better off without chance. Still, even if she still harbored a torch for him, which she clearly didn't, he was now her boss. Dating a boss was definitely off limits. I suppose, but dating where you work is never a good idea, and dating a boss is even worse. Becky shook her head, sending her blonde hair rustling against her shoulders. Oh, I don't know about that. I dated the shift supervisor at my first job. It might not have been a match made in heaven, but it was my first real relationship, and it was pretty amazing. I certainly wouldn't be opposed to dating a boss, especially the manager of a place like this. He has to be making good money. Besides, love doesn't always play by our rules. While Mary Beth couldn't imagine dating someone solely for their money, she could certainly agree that love didn't always play by the rules. If it did, she would have been married to Chance instead of Lucas's father. Of course, she had known that he was a person she shouldn't get involved with. He had the bad boy image down to a T. But he'd managed to charm her and convince her to take a chance on him. She liked to think her guard had simply been down because of her broken heart, but regardless, the damage had been done. So maybe there was something to be said for sticking to her rules. But she hoped one day she would find what her parents had. Even though her father was gone and her mother had remarried, a wistful smile still crossed her mother's face whenever she talked about Mary Beth's father, and the two had held hands whenever they went out together until the very end. Mary Beth had no doubt they had been wildly in love. As she turned to sanitize the table, her phone buzzed in her pocket. A feeling of dread flooded her. No one ever called her except Edith. Pulling the phone out, she pressed the call button, hoping it was nothing serious. Hello? Mary Beth, you have to come get Lucas. His temperature just hit 100, and you know my rule. Mary Beth glanced at her watch. It was almost three. She just needed two more hours to finish out her shift. Can't he just stay until five, Edith? I'm almost done for the day. The condescension in Edith's voice was palpable, even over the phone. No, he cannot. I run a daycare center, not a doctor's office. He's probably already infected the other kids, but I can't go making exceptions or everyone will expect them. Mary Beth sighed. It was an exception, she supposed but she was honestly just hoping for some compassion. Most of the other kids at the daycare came from two parent families. Though it was never easy to take off work, it was definitely easier when you weren't the sole breadwinner. Okay, Edith, I'll be there as soon as I can. She shoved the phone back in her pocket and flashed an apologetic smile at Becky. I'm so sorry, Becky. My son is sick and I have to go pick him up. The compassion she had hoped for from Edith crossed Becky's friendly face. Go, take care of your boy. I remember sick kids. Mary Beth's forehead crinkled in confusion. Becky was so young, and she'd been fairly certain the woman had no children. Not my own, of course. Becky laughed as if she'd just realized what she'd said. My mom had seven kids, though, and I was the oldest. 
I think I stayed home with my brothers and sisters when they were sick more than she did. Anyway, don't worry, we're almost done here and I can finish up. Are you sure? I'll make it up to you somehow. She had no idea how she would ever make it up to her friend, as she had little to offer, but she would try. I'm sure I may not have kids yet, but I can't imagine being a single mother, and I'm happy to help. Go, get out of here. Becky waved a hand to shoo her away. Thank you. Mary Beth pulled the younger woman in for a quick hug before hurrying out the door. Unfortunately, her job paid on a time clock, and in order to clock out early, she had to get approval, which meant asking the new manager. Normally, that wouldn't be that big of an issue for her. But now her new boss was also her ex-boyfriend, which created a whole complicated mess. Plus, she wasn't sure she was ready to tell him about her son. She paused outside his door as she tried to decide what to say. Honesty was always the best policy, but did she really want Chance knowing how wrong her life had turned out? Taking a deep breath, she knocked on the doorframe. Chance glanced up, smiled, and waved her in. I was hoping you would come by. Mary Beth's brow furrowed. You were? Why? He blinked, as if that was a stupid question. Because I haven't seen you in years. I had no idea you were working here. He folded his hands together and leaned forward. So, how have you been? What have you been up to? Mary Beth bit the inside of her lip as she thought about the words she wanted to say. I've not been great, to tell you the truth. After you left me brokenhearted, I fell for the wrong guy, married him, and had a son. He became verbally abusive and then decided he didn't want to be a father any longer. I'm not even sure my son remembers his dad. Now I'm working as a single mother, barely making ends meet, and I don't know if I'll be able to afford to buy my son a Christmas present. Yeah, there was no way she was telling him the whole truth. She took a deep breath and decided to avoid most of his question. I've been okay, but actually I'm here because I need to see if I can take the rest of the day and tomorrow off. I know it's your first day and this is a terrible first impression but I can't help it. He lifted an eyebrow as he regarded her. Had he noticed she avoided his questions? Was he going to press her for an answer? Leaning back, he stroked his chin. Though she didn't want to, she couldn't tear her eyes away from the gesture. She remembered stroking that same chin, usually right before she leaned in to kiss. Nope. That train of thought needed to stop right now. His lips had been off-limits for years, and just because they were now in the same zip code as hers again did not mean she could start fantasizing about them again. It is an unusual request for a new manager, but I know you wouldn't ask if you didn't have a good reason, so I'm assuming you do. The direct question of her reason hadn't been posed, but she could feel it hanging in the air between them. Now was the moment of truth. Did she tell him about her son? Quickly, she ran through possibilities in her head, but there was no way to avoid the question without lying, and she didn't want to do that. Sighing slightly, she met his gaze and opted for the truth. My daycare just called, and my son has a fever. The rules are that he has to be picked up and can't return until the fever's been gone for at least 24 hours. That means I'll have to take off tomorrow to stay home with him. Hopefully it's nothing serious, and I'll be back on Monday. As she'd expected, the news of her son shocked Chance. His lips parted, and he blinked at her, as if at a loss for words. Finally, he swallowed and rubbed a hand across his neck. Though he tried to look composed, the hitch in his voice gave him away. You have a son? How old is he? He just turned five, so unfortunately he missed getting into kindergarten this school year hence the daycare. She could see questions forming in his eyes, but she hoped he wouldn't ask about Lucas's father. Telling him that she had chosen the wrong man after he left her held about as much appeal as getting a root canal. Thankfully, he went a different direction. Does your son get sick often? She hadn't expected that one, 
but she supposed she should have. He was her employer now, after all. And it was the common question employers asked when they found out you had kids. How many days were they going to have to grant for a sick child? Mary Beth shook her head. Hardly ever, and when he does, it's always a quick recovery. You can check my employee file. I don't think I even used all my sick days last year. Chance smiled and shook his head. Relax, Mary Beth. You're fine. I just wanted to know if I could help in any way. Help? Really? After he'd ripped her heart out and left her? Perhaps he was feeling guilty and trying to make amends. Or maybe he had gotten injured in the line of duty and forgotten what he'd done to her. Either way, she did not need his pity. She'd had to find her inner strength in the last few years, and she would call on it now. No, thank you, we'll be fine. Just the time will be perfect. Then you've got it. He grabbed a notepad from the desk and scribbled something down before tearing off the sheet and handing it to her. That's my number. Call me if you won't be back Monday and we'll figure something out. I'll get someone to cover your shift tomorrow. Mary Beth blinked. Had he really just given her his personal number? Did he think they were going to be friends again? Or was this something he would have done for any employee? Um, thank you? She took the paper and shoved it in her pocket before offering a small wave and exiting the office. As she walked to the employee lounge to grab her things, she couldn't help going over the interaction again. What exactly had happened in there? She supposed it was possible he could have forgotten the way he treated her, but it seemed much more likely that he was trying to make up for it. While she appreciated the time off, she certainly hadn't forgotten the past, nor had she forgiven him. They would definitely have to have a conversation soon, but not right now. Right now, she needed to get her son. Twenty minutes later, she pulled into Edith's drive, surprised the woman wasn't waiting on the porch for her. Perhaps the chill in the air was keeping her inside. The news had said another snowfall was headed their way, and Mary Beth could feel it in the air as she hurried up the steps. The door swung open seconds after her knock, and Lucas hurried out to her. His face was flushed, but his eyes looked bright and clear. Unsure what that meant, Mary Beth hoped it was nothing worse than a cold. It had been hard enough to ask Chance for two days off. She didn't want to have to ask for more. He can't come back until... 24 hours after his fever breaks. I know, Edith. Mary Beth swallowed the unchristian words that rose in her throat and forced a small smile instead as she signed the iPad to check Lucas out. I promise I won't bring him back sick. I wouldn't have brought him this morning if I'd known he was going to get a fever. Edith's chest puffed out, a sure sign she was agitated. Well, I just have to remind parents, one sick kid can shut the whole place down for weeks, especially in the winter with the flu going around, and I can't afford to be shut down that long. Mary Beth understood that completely. She couldn't afford to be out of work that long either especially with Christmas coming so soon. But Edith didn't seem to care about that. Have a good weekend, Edith. I'll let you know if he's better for Monday. Placing her arm around Lucas, she leaned down to whisper in his ear, Come on, buddy. Let's get you home and see if we can get you feeling better. I don't feel bad, Mommy. I was just playing really hard. Sadness ringed Lucas's eyes as she placed him in his car seat. Don't worry about it. I was able to get tomorrow off. Maybe if you feel better, we can go see Holly. She buckled him in and then ruffled his hair before shutting the door. Holly was her best friend and her sounding board with her parents gone. Ironically, they had met at Mary Beth's father's funeral. Holly ran a small restaurant and catering business, and Mary Beth's mother had hired her to provide food for the funeral. They had become fast friends after that and she couldn't wait to tell her friend that her ex-boyfriend was her new boss. A small smile tugged at the corners of Mary Beth's lips as she pictured how that conversation might go. The feisty former New Yorker was sure to have a plethora to say on that subject. Chapter 2 
Chapter 5 Chance Chance stared at the doorway long after Mary Beth had left. So many conflicting emotions and thoughts tumbled around in his head. First, he couldn't believe she worked here. In high school, they had shared dreams of leaving courage and taking on the world together. Of course, he had spoiled those plans for both of them, but he was surprised she hadn't continued her own plan. Second, he couldn't believe she was working in housekeeping. Mary Beth was fierce and smart, and she'd always talked about running her own business. He'd had no doubt she could do it either, which made him wonder what had happened in her life the past eight years that she now worked such a solitary job. Finally, he wondered about her son. What did he look like? Was she married? Happy? His eyes flicked to his computer. Being the manager, he could find her records. They might not tell the whole story, but they would give him an idea. Should he, though? Or would that be an invasion of her privacy? He bit the inside of his lip as his finger tapped on the mouse. Surprise! Chance nearly jumped at the sound of his mother's voice in his doorway. Guilt, as if he'd done something wrong, washed over him, and he yanked his hand away from the mouse. Mom, what are you doing back here? He'd thought after her impromptu drop by that morning that he wouldn't see her again today, or at least not until he got off work. She sauntered in, carrying a white box and a manila folder. A large bag hung off her shoulder. You're off now, right? I have the paperwork for your house, and since I was bringing it over, I thought I would bring something to celebrate your first day. She placed the box down on his desk, tucked the manila folder in her bag, and then opened the lid of the box. A small brown cake with the word congrats spelled out in green frosting stared up at him. Um, thank you? Chance wasn't sure what to make of his mother's sudden extra attention. He knew it had been years since he'd been home, but even when he'd lived here, he and his mother hadn't been that close. Perhaps it had been due to her overbearing personality, the one his father claimed as the excuse for his affair. Or maybe it was just that he hadn't had as much in common with his mother as he had with his father. At least, the man he'd thought his father was until his selfishness had uprooted the entire family and Chance's view on everything. How about we share a slice and you tell me about your day? She opened up the bag that had been over her shoulder and pulled out two plates, two forks, and a knife. Chance glanced longingly at his watch. He'd wanted to go straight back to his room, where the jetted bathtub beckoned with the promise of soothing his sore and tired muscles. Butch had insisted he take one of the nicer rooms, as he was the manager, but even Chance had been surprised that the room had a jetted tub. He'd never used one, but he knew women raved about them. He was curious to find out if they lived up to their reputation. But it appeared that would have to wait. Rehashing his day with his mother, of all people, sounded about as appealing as watching annoying YouTube videos, something the youngest members in his unit had done and which he never understood. But she was here, and she had gone through the trouble of purchasing a cake. The woman couldn't cook to save her life at least not anything appealing. He figured he could give her a half an hour or so. Sure, sounds good. Did you bring any milk? Her face pinched into something between shock and a grimace. Ooh, no. Did I forget to tell you that I don't drink regular milk anymore? Only almond or coconut milk. Do you know there are so many health benefits to avoiding regular milk? He did not know the health benefits to avoiding regular milk, nor did he really care. He liked regular milk. He liked the taste of it. He liked the ease of it. And he definitely liked the price of it compared to the alternatives that he often saw in the grocery store. Not that he ever looked that closely at them, 
In his opinion, if it didn't come from a cow, it shouldn't be called milk. Anyway, she continued, without missing a beat, I did happen to find some chocolate almond milk at the store. She reached into the bag again and pulled out two containers of almond milk, complete with a plastic straw glued to the side. Her bag was beginning to remind him of Mary Poppins, but not in a good way. He'd never been a fan of almond milk, or almond anything, for that matter. But his mother seemed to have forgotten that fact. He found that surprising as he could remember dumping his bag of Halloween candy on the floor every year and picking out the almond joys to give to his father. He thought his mother had picked up on his aversion. She'd been in the room every year. But if she had, it didn't seem to stick in her mind. He still had to remind her that he didn't like almonds. And every time he said something, she acted like it was the first time she was hearing it. He would say nothing tonight. She likely wouldn't remember it anyway. His mother had always been obsessed with her diet. Even when he was growing up, she rarely ate normal food and had often stocked unpronounceable and unappealing things in the fridge. His friends had never wanted to come to his house after school because they knew that instead of chips or even fruit for a snack, they would find things like seaweed or tofu. Chance had learned to cook the basic necessities at a young age for that very reason. He was a wizard at boxed mac and cheese. Can you eat the cake then? She smiled and rolled her eyes. Of course, silly. It's a gluten-free, non-dairy paleo cake. Of course it was. He sighed as she sliced a large piece for him and put it on a plate. Suddenly, even the thought of eating cake seemed much less appealing since it was bound to taste like cardboard. He hoped she wouldn't force him to eat the whole slice because he wasn't sure he could stomach it. So, is it everything you thought it would be? She asked as she cut a tiny slice for herself and placed it on her plate. Evidently, even gluten-free, non-dairy, tasteless paleo cake had to be eaten in moderation. Though she had abruptly switched subjects, Chance assumed she was asking about work. He shrugged and speared a small bite of the cake. I guess so, but I wasn't sure what to expect. I do know that I'm going to need to hire a personal assistant. There is just too much to do by myself. Her eyebrow lifted. Oh. Do you have someone in mind? He thought about everyone he'd met earlier. Most of them were probably capable, but Mary Beth flashed to the front of his mind. He knew she would be more than competent for the job, but should he even offer? She hadn't seemed exactly pleased that he was her boss? Not that he could blame her. Would she even consider being his assistant? I just met some of them this morning, and there are many more to meet, but I'm sure I can find a capable man or woman from among the employees. His mother tilted her head as she gazed at him. I don't know if you'd like having a woman assistant. You're so used to working with men, right? He was, and while he enjoyed working with guys, it might be refreshing to work with a woman especially one with strawberry blonde hair who had been there for longer than he had and obviously had an eye for detail. He shook his head slightly to dislodge the image of Mary Beth. Not only did she not belong in his mind, but she probably wouldn't return the feelings. After all, he told her he was incapable of love and left her right after graduation. Besides, she had obviously moved on as there was a kid in the picture. He should do the same. Is there a reason you don't want me to hire a woman? A look of mock shock covered her face, and she placed a manicured hand on her chest and shook her head. I never said that. I simply thought you'd be more comfortable with a man since that's who you've worked with for so long. Chance hadn't worked with many women in his eight-year military stint, but there had been a few. 
And they had been some of the bravest, most amazing women he'd ever met or worked with. Of course, his mother knew nothing about them. They hadn't had many discussions about his military career. She hadn't even asked about his injury yet. We'll see. There's obviously several more people to meet. So I probably won't get around to hiring anyone until next week as it is. Just be sure you pick someone who can handle the job. There's nothing worse than hiring someone and having them fail to do what they claim. His mother speared another bite of cake and pointed the fork at him for emphasis. He wondered if she had an employee in mind or if she were referring more to her ex-husband. It didn't matter. He neither cared nor wanted to continue the discussion. Instead, he nodded and hoped that his mother wouldn't stay long after the cake was finished. The bath still called to him, and exhaustion was blanketing him faster than he would have thought possible. Well, I'm sure you have some things to do, and I need my beauty sleep. She pushed her barely eaten plate of cake to the middle of his desk and then reached into her bag, bringing the manila folder out again. If you can sign this, I can give you the key. She placed the folder on the desk and then fumbled around in the Mary Poppins bag once more before holding up a silver key and wiggling it for effect. Chance grabbed the folder, careful to avoid dropping it in the food, opened it, and scanned the papers inside. The contract appeared to be in order and allowed him to take custody of the house tonight. He probably wouldn't sleep there as everything would need to be unpacked, but at least he could let the movers in and then spend another relaxing night in his hotel room. With a quick scribble, he signed the papers and handed the folder back to his mother. She smiled, tucked the folder back in her bag, dropped the key in his hand, and stood. This has been fun. Let's do dinner soon so we can catch up more. Maybe Butch will join us. Dinner with his mother sounded bad enough, but dinner with her and his new boss, who also happened to be her current boyfriend? He honestly couldn't think of anything worse. Besides, with his mother's dietary restrictions, he doubted wherever his mother picked would have decent food, especially good meat, and he loved meat. Sure, I'll have to see what I have going on at the lodge, but I'll try to get some time. She sashayed around the desk, circled her arms around his shoulder, and gave him an awkward side hug. It's so good to have you home again. Enjoy your new place, and let me know if you need anything else. Though the words made him feel more like a boy than the man he was, Chance patted her hand and nodded. Ignoring the words would be much easier than trying to explain how they made him feel. As she disappeared out the door, a huge feeling of relief blanketed Chance, followed by guilt. He shouldn't be relieved his mother was gone. After all, she was the only family he still had since his father had left. But her personality had never felt so... overbearing before. He wondered if she had always been this way, or if he were just more jaded than he had been before. It didn't matter. That was a thought to explore another time. Tonight, he needed to meet the movers and then return to the hotel room and the jetted tub, soak in a nice warm bath, and crawl into bed. In that order, he had another big day tomorrow. Chapter 6 Mary Beth Mary Beth held her breath as she checked the thermometer. Lucas certainly hadn't seemed sick when she'd gotten him home last night. In fact, other than still being apologetic, he'd been his normal, energetic self. She'd put him to bed early and placed a cool washcloth on his head, just to be sure. But she'd retired for the night, thinking that perhaps Edith had just chosen a bad time to take his temperature. Sure enough, the thermometer read 98.6 perfectly normal. Though she was annoyed she had to miss work over nothing, she was relieved it was nothing serious. A doctor's visit was definitely outside her budget, 
especially with Christmas coming soon and the loss of a day's worth of pay. 98.6. That's normal, buddy. How are you feeling? Still a little tired, he said with a yawn. But I think that's just because I got up too early. I told you I wasn't sick. He dipped his spoon back into his cereal bowl and scooped up a large amount of brightly colored circles. She did not understand his obsession with Fruit Loops lately, but she was sure she had enjoyed sugary cereal as a child as well. Besides, he didn't seem to mind the generic brand, which fit her budget, so she supposed she shouldn't complain. You did, bud, but I guess Edith has to be careful. The spoon paused just outside of his lips, and he locked gazes with her. I don't have to go today, right? His sad tone was not lost on her, and she gave him a sympathetic smile. You don't. Her policy says I have to keep you out, even if you have no fever today. I know you don't like it there, but your new school starts in a few weeks, and I'm positive you will have so much fun there. He shrugged, clearly not believing her, and continued munching on his cereal. Mary Beth couldn't blame him. She had told him he would enjoy Edith's. And while he did have fun some days, it was not the same as when she'd been able to stay home with him. Anyway, this means we can go see Holly for lunch today. Would you like that? A sparkle ignited in his eyes, and he sat up a little straighter. That would be fun, but do we have the money? Ouch. She had obviously talked about money, or the lack of it, too much around Lucas. She didn't want him worrying about money. That was her job. I think we have just enough for lunch out. She leaned closer, as if sharing a secret, and winked at him. Besides, Holly always gives me a discount. Though it was true that her best friend rarely charged her full price when they frequented her restaurant, Mary Beth might still have to see if she could take on a few extra hours, especially after having to take off today. But it would be worth it to do something fun with Lucas. A wide smile covered his face. Discounts are good, right, Mommy? That they are. She ruffled his hair before grabbing the ingredients to make her own breakfast. While she was excited to see her best friend and share her latest news, Holly didn't open for breakfast, which meant she would need to find a way to kill a few hours before they could venture out of the house. Thankfully, there was plenty to be done. Though not the neatest person, an irony since she cleaned rooms for a living, Mary Beth tried her best to straighten the house on the weekends. She told herself that her lack of motivation the rest of the week was due to her long hours and the fact that she cleaned all day. But she'd always been a little cluttered. She assumed cleaning the rooms at the resort was easier because they weren't hers and they held no items of sentimental value like her own home did. It never failed that when she finally got the bug to start cleaning, Either pictures with Lucas's handprints would cross her path and she would be unable to throw them away, or he would notice what she was doing and claim every toy she picked up was one he still played with, even if it was coated with a layer of dust. Perhaps she could finally make a dent today, and maybe, if she was lucky, it would keep her mind off the topic it kept trying to wander to. What to do about Chance being her new boss? When the timer on her watch buzzed, alerting her that lunchtime had rolled around, she placed the last book on the shelf and stared in satisfaction at the living room. Though not perfect, she had managed to find a place for everything, and it definitely felt neater than it had that morning. Plus, she had managed to keep her mind off chance for three whole hours. That was definitely a win in her book. She hollered down the hall for Lucas and then ducked into the bathroom to check her appearance. After smoothing a few stray tendrils and adding a shimmer of lip gloss, she grabbed her keys and they headed out the door. Holly's restaurant was already filling up as they entered. It wasn't surprising, as other than the restaurant at the lodge, 
it was the most affordable place in town to eat, and had the best food. They had barely made it in the door when Holly's high-pitched squeal reached Mary Beth's ears. Mary Beth, is that you? She threw her arms around Mary Beth and squeezed tighter than Mary Beth would have thought possible from her lithe friend. I thought I was going to have to show up at your job and drag you to lunch. As if realizing what she just said, she placed a hand on her chin and tilted her head. Wait, shouldn't you be at work today? Yes, I should be. However, Edith swore Lucas had a temperature yesterday, and though he's completely normal now, her rule is 24 hours. Mary Beth shrugged. So, we thought we'd come see you. Holly smiled, her pink lips sparkling in the light. Well, I'm certainly glad you did. Squatting down, she touched the end of Lucas's nose with her index finger. And how are you, little man? I'm hungry. Mary Beth rolled her eyes as Holly laughed. Lucas was definitely a growing boy, and eating seemed to be his favorite hobby behind video games lately. I can certainly help you out with that. Holly grabbed two menus from the hostess stand and led the way to a table near the back. I'll have to keep an eye on things, but I think I can snag a few minutes with you. Good, because I definitely have some news for you. Holly's brow quirked at that statement. Can't wait to hear it. You guys decide what you want, and I'll be right back. Okay, Lucas, what do you feel like today? Burger? Pizza? Nuggets? Holly's restaurant was definitely a little more upscale than a fast food place, but she kept her kids' menu stocked with favorites. I think I want a burger today, he said with a nod. Then his eyes widened. Can I get cheese on it? Mary Beth chuckled at his innocence. I'm pretty sure Holly can swing that. She glanced over the menu as she waited for Holly to return. While everything looked good, the four cheese pasta seemed to be calling her name loudest today. Excuse me, but where is the manager? This is not what I ordered. A woman's obnoxious voice carried over to their table. And Mary Beth turned to see who the voice belonged to. She did not recognize the blonde woman waving a manicured hand in the air but she did not envy Holly's job at that moment. Disdain painted the woman's expression, and from her outfit, it was clear the woman had money. Though it was a generalization, and she didn't like to label people, she knew that those with money were often the hardest to deal with, especially those from out of town who seemed to feel as if everyone in town should wait on them hand and foot. Holly hurried over to the woman's table, an anxious look on her face. A quick scan of the restaurant revealed Mary Beth was not the only person watching the loud exchange. I'm Holly, the owner. What can I do for you? Holly's voice was calm, though Mary Beth knew she hated dealings like these. Holly was a laid-back boss and preferred to keep her restaurant low-key. I ordered the salad with dressing on the side, but as you can see, it came on my salad. The woman held up her plate, as if that explained everything. Well, I'll be happy to fix that for you. Let me order you another salad. Don't bother. The woman issued a loud sigh and made an exaggerated motion of checking her watch. I have an appointment I have to get to. I'll just eat later. Oh, and don't expect a tip. Before Holly could say another word, the woman stood and exited the restaurant. From the obvious swinging of her hips, it was apparent she knew people were watching and wanted to give them a show. Mary Beth shook her head at the audacity of some people and offered Holly a sympathetic smile when she returned to their table. Don't worry. Everyone in here heard you handle that with grace. Holly sighed and shook her head. I just don't understand some people, but I'm not going to dwell on it. Did you guys decide what you wanted? 
Mary Beth gave Holly their order and waited for her to place it and return so she could share her news. With a sigh, Holly slid into the booth. Okay, order placed. Now, you said you had some news. I do, and you're not going to believe it. You know how I told you they were hiring a new manager at the lodge? Holly nodded and tilted her head. Yeah, I'm assuming you met him or her? Mary Beth chuckled. Boy, did I. My new manager is my ex-boyfriend. She fixed Holly with a pointed stare so she would understand just how awful this was. Wait, the one from high school who said he was incapable of love and would never return? Mary Beth had filled her in on all things chance one night after Lucas had gone to sleep. The very one, and he's acting like none of it ever happened. What? The word exploded out of Holly's mouth, drawing a few stares in their direction. Holly held up her hand in apology to the other customers and leaned closer, lowering her voice. What are you going to do? What can I do? Mary Beth asked with a sigh. She'd run through a few possibilities in her head, but as she couldn't afford to quit and had no other options looming, she'd only been left with one. Avoid him as much as possible, I suppose. Yeah, I see that going well for you, Holly said with a laugh. Maybe you'll get lucky and he'll fall for you all over again, then you could break his heart. Mary Beth scrunched her nose and shook her head. No, thank you. Knowing her luck, she would get him to fall for her again, only to find she reciprocated the feelings, and then he would leave again. Not only do I not want to be like him, but you know my luck. One heartbreak from him is more than enough. What's a heartbreak? Lucas asked, as if finally listening to the conversation. Something we hope you never experience, Holly said as she slipped out of the booth. I'm going to check on our food. Be right back. Mary Beth couldn't help but echo Holly's sentiment as she watched her walk away. Though she knew it was probably impossible, she hoped she might be able to shield Lucas from the heartbreaks she had experienced in her past. If only it were that easy. Chapter 7. Chance Chance thanked the man sitting in front of him. Though he seemed completely capable, Chance just couldn't imagine working closely with him. Maybe it was the fact that the man sounded like he had a perpetual cold, or the fact that he had rubbed his nose at least ten times during the interview. But if he were honest with himself, it was probably due more to the fact that he couldn't get Mary Beth out of his mind. Though his mother had interrupted him last night, the computer had called to him as soon as he entered the office this morning, and he'd found himself poring over her records for the first half hour. They had been complete, though sparse of any additional information, especially any about her family, and he hadn't found out much other than what he already knew. However, she was an incredibly hard worker who rarely took a day off, and that was exactly what he was looking for. Thanks. We'll be in touch. He stood and shook hands with the man, thankfully not the hand that seemed attached to his nose, before crossing his name off the list after the man had left. Other than Mary Beth, there were only four more names on the list, but he needed a break. As his stomach rumbled, he checked his watch. It was a little early, but he figured the on-site restaurant might be serving lunch already and he needed to check out their food anyway to get a feel for the place. The restaurant had an upscale feel with its jewel-toned colors and gold accents running throughout the place, and the seating was comfortable. But Chance grew a little concerned when it took more than five minutes for a waiter to approach his table. Considering how few people were in the restaurant, the service should have been faster. He would definitely need to see if the restaurant was short-staffed. Sorry, has anyone helped you yet? 
A young man with dark hair and glasses appeared at the table, holding a thin black rectangular item that Chance hoped was the menu. Not yet. Are you the only one on today? Chance asked as he looked around the place. The man shook his head. No, but the chef is having an impromptu meeting, so everyone is gathered in the kitchen right now. The man lowered his voice and leaned a little closer to Chance. Evidently, there's a new manager on site, and Chef really wants to impress him. Chance smiled up at the man. You don't say. Well, I would hate to interrupt such an important meeting. Does the chef call them often? He didn't mind if the chef called an impromptu meeting every once in a while, but if this was a regular occurrence, he would need to discuss the proper times for meetings with the chef. The man shook his head. No, this is the first one I've ever attended. Anyway, why don't you take a look at the menu? He placed it on the table in front of Chance, and I'll be right back to take your order. Sounds good. Um, can I get your name? Chance knew name badges were not the norm for upscale restaurants, but servers and waiters generally identified themselves. Oh yeah, sorry, it's Paul. As the man hurried away, Chance made a mental note to talk with the restaurant staff he hadn't met yesterday. He had no desire to get Paul or anyone else in trouble, but consistency was definitely a necessity, and leaving customers with no idea of one's name was a customer service no-no. Opening the menu, he stared down at the offerings, which were slim. The menu only contained two pages. There was a choice of two appetizers, a salad, and scallops. Three main dishes, all of which had French-sounding names, but he assumed contained chicken, steak, or fish, and three desserts. Since there wasn't much offered, he hoped the food would be delicious. Paul returned a moment later with a basket of warm bread, and Chance placed his order for the salad and steak dish. He had just buttered a slice of the bread when he heard a familiar voice call out to him across the room. Seriously? Two days in a row? This was getting out of hand. Chance! There you are! You really need to get that personal assistant? Or a secretary? I had to scour the hotel looking for you. His mother slid into a chair across from him and tisked at the slice of bread in his hand. You really shouldn't eat that. The gluten is so bad for you. Well, lucky for me, I don't have an issue with gluten. Chance wasn't even exactly sure what gluten was, but if it had anything to do with bread or pasta, he certainly wasn't going to give it up. A frustrated sigh escaped his mother's lips as she rolled her eyes. Well, when you get all puffy and inflamed, don't say I didn't warn you. He was about to tell her he didn't get puffy or inflamed, but she kept right on talking. Do they have anything on the menu that's gluten-free here? I keep asking Butch to meet me for lunch here one day, but he's always so busy. Hopefully, now that you're here, you can take some of the load off him. It would be great to have a boyfriend I actually saw once in a while. As she droned on, Chance tried not to wonder if Butch's busy schedule remained full because of work or if the man were avoiding his mother. He hoped it was the former because trying to tell his mother that she might be the reason for his busyness held no appeal at all. Hopefully they have a salad here. I'm starving, but I have a showing in an hour, so I don't have much time. The waiter should be back in a minute. We can ask him, because I honestly don't know. In hopes of ending the conversation, Chance shoved the bread into his mouth. His mother adjusted her watch and glanced around the restaurant. Where is the waiter? In fact, where is everyone? Shouldn't someone have come to check on you? I may need to have a word with Butch about the way he's running this place. The customer service here is dreadful. 
Chance bit back his annoyance and swallowed his bread. Mom, no. The chef is trying to impress me, so he's having a meeting with the staff. I'll talk with him later. He should be trying to impress your guests. Maybe you need to hire me to work for you, Chance. I could whip this place into shape like that. She snapped her fingers. Mom, I just started. Give me a few days to define my role before you decide the place is worthless. Besides, aren't you busy enough? She waved her hand in a dismissive gesture. I could always move my schedule around and carve out a few hours. It's been a little slow lately anyway. December usually is, but I didn't say worthless. I just think I could help it run smoother. Chance pursed his lips together. He did not want to argue with his mother right now. Relief filled him when Paul appeared a moment later with his food. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize you had a guest. Let me get you a menu as well. Before he had taken a step, his mother held up her hand. Don't bother. What do you have on the menu that is paleo or gluten-free? Um, the question clearly caught Paul off guard. We have a salad and scallops for starters. I'll take the salad, but please make sure there is no dressing and no croutons on the greens. I'll take oil and vinegar dressing on the side. Now, what do you have for the main course besides whatever he's having? Her nose wrinkled slightly as she indicated Chance's meal. Chance rolled his eyes and took a bite of the offensive steak. Perhaps the conversation with his mother would have to be sooner rather than later. Chapter 8 Mary Beth Mary Beth placed Lucas's bowl in the sink and sent him to his room to grab his shoes. It had been a nice weekend staying home with him, but Monday had come quickly, and though she wasn't sure she was ready to see Chance again, she needed to get back to work. Thankfully, Lucas had no trouble finding his shoes today, and half an hour later she had dropped him off and was clocking in. As she turned to her locker to put her purse and lunch inside, a note taped to the outside caught her attention. Tearing it off, she opened it up and read the short message. Please come see me today when you get here. Chance. Oh, no. Was he planning to fire her after all? Dock her pay? Maybe he'd found out she was a single mother and realized she was bound to have to take more days off in the future. Dread filled her as she placed her purse and lunch in the locker and shut the door. She might as well get the meeting over with. She knocked softly on his door jam when she reached his office. His door, as he claimed it always would be, was open, and he looked up at her and smiled. Mary Beth, I'm glad to see you made it in today. How's your son? He motioned for her to sit in one of the chairs across from him. He's better, thank you. Unfortunately, he wasn't really sick, but I have to follow my daycare provider's rules. Thank you so much for the time off. I'd like to say it won't happen again, but I can't guarantee that. He held up his hand to interrupt her. I told you not to worry about it. I know you, but I also looked into your work history, and you have missed very few days. Even the ones you have were verified sick days for either you or your son. Mary Beth nodded, wondering where he was going with this. Anyway, I have a special position I need filled, and I need someone I can count on. I interviewed a few people on Friday, but now I'd like to interview you. Can you spare a few minutes? A special position? What on earth was he talking about? Was this his way of trying to apologize to her? If he thought he could waltz back into her life with his charming smile, and some made-up title and she'd fall into his arms again? He had another think coming. She wasn't going to let him off the hook that easily. I suppose, but can I ask what sort of position? His lips pulled into a smile. One I happen to think you'll be suited perfectly for. Heat flushed across Mary Beth's cheeks, 
and her feisty nature reared its head. Was he trying to flatter her? He hadn't spoken to her in nearly a decade, so how on earth did he know what she was suited for? I'm not sure how you would know that since you haven't been around me in the past eight years. I need a personal assistant, Mary Beth, he said, cutting her off. Her jaw dropped open. He wanted her to be his assistant? Had he lost his mind? And you thought I would be a good candidate? I need someone with an attention to detail who can make sure I'm doing everything I'm supposed to and who can catch anything that falls through the cracks. I reached out to your old boss, and he agreed you would be a perfect candidate. Now Mary Beth was really unsure whether to be flattered or unnerved. I don't mean to be rude, but I assume you understand that you aren't my favorite person? Chance threw back his head and laughed. Laughed. Mary Beth wasn't sure whether he was going crazy or she was. That's exactly why I want you. I know you won't suck up to me, and you won't be afraid to give it to me straight. Mary Beth narrowed her gaze at him. Was he serious? Though it had been years since she had talked with him, he hadn't been the type to play games with people in the past. Surely he wouldn't do it now. It sounds like an amazing opportunity, but what would the hours be? I'm afraid I need weekends off because my daycare isn't open on Saturday and Sunday. His smile stretched a little wider. That's the best part. Your hours would stay the same, but the pay would be a little better. He grabbed a sheet from the notepad and wrote down a number. Then he folded it and slid it across the table to her. Mary Beth picked up the paper and opened it. Her eyebrows lifted at the number he had written on the paper. Is this per month? It was nearly double what she was making now. He nodded. It is. And that's just for the first 90 days, to make sure it works out. After that, it's a 5% raise. Plus there's dental, medical, vision, and two weeks paid vacation after the 90 days. Mary Beth's mouth dropped open. You do know I'm just a maid, right? His smile faded, and he shook his head. Nobody is just anything, and I'm sorry if I made you feel that way. Your present does not define your future. If you think you wouldn't like the job, that's one thing, but don't sell yourself short. I wouldn't be offering it if I didn't think you could handle it. Mary Beth's mouth dried up. This couldn't be real. Her life didn't work out this way. It hadn't since the day he left her. She'd often told Holly that if it weren't for bad luck, she'd have no luck at all. So this had to be a dream. If she pinched herself, she would wake up, back in her little house, and realize this had all been a dream. One that would disintegrate and leave her feeling foolish as she accepted the offer. And are you offering it? I thought this was just an interview. He waved his hand. A formality. I knew the moment I saw you again that I wanted you. Needed you. So, he leaned back and folded his arms across his chest. What do you think? A million thoughts ran through her mind. Taking the job would be amazing, not only for her resume, but for her financial situation. But it would also put her in close proximity with Chance Overstreet every day. Could she work this close with him without developing feelings for him again? He'd broken her heart once, and she certainly had no desire to go through the experience a second time. Plus, this time there was Lucas to consider. She would not be able to lock herself in her room, eat ice cream, and listen to sad songs for hours on end if he broke her heart again. However, this offer was simply too good to pass up and it might never come around again. I think you just found yourself a new personal assistant. Wonderful. I think we're going to make a great pair, Mary Beth. As if he'd just realized the faux pas he'd made, he grimaced and tried again. I mean, as work associates, of course. Mary Beth held up her hand to stop the embarrassing derailment. 
I get it. Let's just both try to forget the past and keep in mind that's all we are. Work associates. She wasn't sure if that last statement was more for his sake or hers. Somehow, she thought forgetting the past might be the hardest part of this new position. Chapter 9 Chance Chance smiled as he looked over the list Mary Beth had organized for the requirements for the day. He had known she would be amazing at the job, but seeing her in action was something else. With a laser-like focus, she had gone through each email and request sent to him, starring the important ones and deleting the rest. She also made a list of possible improvements, things she had heard her peers ask for over the years, or things she thought would make the lodge run smoother. It was almost like the position was made for her. Knock, knock. Mary Beth stood in the doorway, but her normal smile was missing. Instead, a hesitant, pensive expression covered her face. Do you have a minute? He'd sent her out to share the good news with the departments, but from the look on her face, he wondered if he should have done it himself. Had people not been excited about her getting the position? He motioned her into the office. I always have time for you. What's up? Her teeth chewed on her bottom lip and her hands twisted her skirt. Something was definitely bugging her. I'm not sure how to say this, but your mother is here and she's talking to the chef. I don't know if you've met the chef, but he's pretty adamant that his menu is perfect. I doubt he's going to take highly to someone trying to change his menu. I could ask her to leave, but I thought you might want to handle it, since she's your mother and all. Chance sighed. He knew he should have had the talk with his mother after the lunch on Friday, but he'd honestly hoped her work would keep her busy and she would forget about her plan to help him out. Obviously, he had been wrong. And if she wanted this relationship with Butch to work out, he needed to tell her to back off before it was too late. Thanks for letting me know, Mary Beth. I'll take care of her. Can you make a list of all the events happening this month? I want to make sure I make an appearance at all of them. And being December, I'm sure this month will be busier than most. She issued a swift nod. Of course, sir. I'll get right on it. He wished she would stop calling him sir and use his name. He wanted to hear it from her lips again. But it seemed wrong to ask her to call him Chance. She was obviously still sore over their breakup, and she had every right to be. But he wished there was some way he could erase the past, or at least change it. Perhaps she felt better using the formality, and he would honor that, even if it drove him nuts. Thank you. I'll be back as soon as I take care of the issue. As he left the office, he sent up a prayer for the right words to say. He knew his mother was probably still hurting from the way his father had left as well. Maybe the more assertive side of her was in reaction to that experience, and if so, he didn't want to make it any worse. Before he even reached the large kitchen, his mother's voice carried out to him. We need to update the menu. While this food is good, it's not the high-end food that clients will be expecting, and it's loaded with unhealthy ingredients. Oh, great. She really was trying to tell the award-winning chef what to cook. He'd hoped Mary Beth had been exaggerating about that, but no such luck. He was bound to have to do some damage control once he got rid of her. Pushing open the door, he forced a smile to his face. Ah, uh, mother, there you are. Can I have a word with you? The chef, leaning against the counter with folded arms, shot him a look that lay somewhere between annoyance and relief. Just a minute, Chance. I'm going over some new menu options with the chef here. Yeah, that's kind of what I need to talk to you about, Mom. That isn't your job. He touched her elbow in hopes that she would come with him without making a scene. No such luck. She shook off his hand and gaped at him. 
What are you talking about? We talked about this chance and you agreed the menu could use some tweaking. Chance shot an apologetic look at the chef. That hadn't been what he'd said at all, but he could see how his nod at her suggestion might have given her that impression. I agreed that looking into healthier options might be something I would consider in the future, but I did not say you could come in here and tell my chef to change his menu. Mom, you're not my personal assistant. You have a job, remember? Her face crumpled. Actually, I don't. At least not much of one anyway. I told you December was hard, but this year has been extra slow. Even the few people who have come in looking have chosen to go with a different realtor. Chance wrapped his arm around his mother and herded her toward the door. He was afraid she was heading for a breakdown, and the kitchen was not the place to do it. Mom, let's go somewhere a little quieter and talk. Relief filled him when she allowed him to lead her from the kitchen and into a smaller conference room down the hallway. I'm sorry, his mother said, wiping at the corner of her eye. I shouldn't have come barging in, but I just feel so useless. Butch doesn't seem to have time for me. Work is slow, and I just thought I could be useful. He took a deep breath and ran a hand through his hair. Mom, you are not useless. You are an amazing realtor. But I have to tell you something and it's not going to be easy to hear. He paused, trying to gather the words in his head so they would come out right. Now, maybe it's just the fact that I've been gone for a few years, but you have been much more... He struggled to find the right word. Intense, since I've been back. I don't know Butch well, but I'm concerned that his distancing might turn into a break-up if you don't find a way to relax a little. Her mouth dropped open, and he wasn't sure if the expression on her face was of anger or denial. He waited for the reprimand he was sure was about to spill forth, but instead she sighed and sank into a chair. You're right. Her shoulders slumped, and her head fell into her hands. I've been so lost since your father left me. Helpless. I just needed to feel like I had control over something. Chance pulled out a chair next to his mother and placed a hand on her arm. Mom, his leaving hit both of us hard. I ran, which was the wrong thing to do. But I guess I never thought about how it affected you. I'm sorry. I should have been there for you. His mother sniffed and chuckled. You know, all those fad diets were for him. He told me once that I had put on weight and he no longer found me attractive. That should have been a warning sign. But I thought if I could shed the pounds, he would stick around. Then, when he left, I thought it was because I still wasn't small enough and I had been too meek, so I took some assertive training classes. Chance shook his head. How had he missed how much his mother needed him? How much she was hurting? To be fair, he'd only been 18 when he left, and he'd been hurting too. But he should have been there for her. Mom. He waited until she looked him in the eyes. Dad had his own issues, and I doubt very much they had anything to do with you at all. As he said the words aloud, he realized they were words he needed to hear as well. For years, he'd wondered if his father's affair had been because he wasn't a good enough son. He told Mary Beth he couldn't love, and he had thought that at the time. But even more, he'd felt that if he hadn't been good enough for his father, how could he be good enough for her? Of course, he hadn't been able to say that to her, but he had wondered if he'd wanted to take over the shop. Instead of always complaining about it, would his father have stayed? He realized now that his father wouldn't have stayed no matter what. It wasn't about his mother, and it wasn't about him. It was about his father's selfishness, plain and simple. He squeezed her arm. You are a beautiful woman, Mom. You are smart and talented and intense, she asked with a small smile. 
He chuckled and returned her grin. A little, but I know if you can find a way to dial it back, just a notch or two, that you will not only find yourself again, but someone, whether it's Butch or not, who will love you for who you are. His mother wiped the tears from her cheeks and cocked her head at him. When did you get so grown up? And how did you get so smart? I guess eight years will account for the grown-up part, but as for my intelligence, I'd like to think I got that from you. Another tear spilled from her eye, but this time Chance knew it wasn't from sadness. As he hugged his mother goodbye, he thought that perhaps they might both be okay after all. Chapter 10 Mary Beth Mary Beth was still smiling as she pulled into Edith's house. She still wasn't sure this wasn't all a dream, but it had been an amazing day. Not only had she gotten a promotion, with a raise, but working with Chance hadn't proven to be that bad. Of course, that probably had to do with the fact that she'd spent more time going through his emails than actually interacting with him. But even when she had, it had been easy, almost like old times. She hadn't felt this validated or this good in a long time. Mommy! Lucas ran to her as soon as she stepped into the room, throwing his arms around her legs. Hey, buddy. Mary Beth gave him a quick hug before signing him out on the iPad. Did you have a good day? Yeah, mostly. He motioned for her to bend down so he could whisper in her ear. Except Miss Edith said I couldn't play outside much because some man was watching. Mary Beth's eyes widened at those words and she sought out Edith. She didn't want to scare Lucas by asking about the man out loud, but thankfully Edith was already coming her direction, a mission clear on her face. Lucas, can you play for just another minute while I talk with Miss Edith? Mary Beth was careful to keep her voice calm, even though her nerves were coiling like a spring wound too tightly. Though he was young, Lucas was not stupid, and he would pick up on her worry if she let it show. He looked from Mary Beth to Edith a few times before shrugging and running back to the playroom. What man? Mary Beth hissed when he was gone. Edith folded her arms across her chest and lifted an eyebrow. How am I supposed to know what man? He was tall but too far away for me to see much detail. Besides, he wore a hat and a heavy coat. I just know that he seemed a little too interested in Lucas. Didn't seem to watch any of the other kids. Fear clawed at Mary Beth's throat. Had it been Colin, Lucas's father? Why on earth would he be back? Or someone else? She wasn't sure which scenario scared her more. Why didn't you call me? Edith huffed and threw her hands in the air. Last week you were angry that I called you at work when Lucas was sick? He wasn't, actually, Mary Beth interrupted. He didn't have a fever for the rest of the night or the next day. She clamped her mouth shut. That kind of outburst was not normal for her, but neither was this feeling of fear squeezing her throat. Edith shot her a glare and continued as if she hadn't spoken. And now you're mad that I didn't call you? I'm sorry, but if a strange man is watching Lucas, one who might try to kidnap him, I want to know about it. Edith folded her arms across her chest. Which is why I'm telling you now. Are you sure it was some stranger, though, and not the boy's father? No, I'm not sure of that, Mary Beth said through clenched teeth. But if you knew his father, you would understand why both of those scenarios are equally dangerous. She rubbed a hand across her forehead. Please, just call me if you see the man again. I want to protect my son. Edith's glare softened as she read the fear in Mary Beth's face. I'll call. Thank you. Mary Beth called out for Lucas and snagged his hand when he reached her side. 
She had a feeling she would have a hard time letting him out of her sight for the next few days. Mommy, why are you holding my hand so tightly? The fear that quivered in his little voice broke Mary Beth's heart, and she forced herself to loosen her grip on him. I'm sorry, buddy. I didn't mean to. As she opened the car door to load him in, she glanced around the area. More than likely, she was just overreacting, but she couldn't help but feel as if eyes were on her. Lucas, she asked as she strapped him in, did you see the man who was outside today? He shook his head. Nah, I was too busy playing. His face folded into a frown. And tell Miss Edith that I had to go inside. She should be relieved. After all, she had no idea if Lucas even remembered his father. But what if he did? Or what if Colin just convinced him? Lucas was only five and apt to believe him, especially because Mary Beth knew he was craving that male connection. A refresh on the stranger danger talk might be in order tonight. Mary Beth shut Lucas's door, and after a final glance around, she climbed into the driver's seat and fired up the old car. Thankfully, the engine roared to life. The last thing she wanted to do with her nerves all jittery was deal with her carburetor. Unfortunately, her relief was short-lived. They hadn't even made it halfway home when the engine sputtered and then died. No! Mary Beth pounded on the steering wheel in frustration. She did not need this. The sun had already set, the one thing she hated about winter, casting all manners of shadows across the road, and she still hadn't shaken the eerie feeling that had plagued her since Edith's house. Why are we stopped, Mommy? Lucas called from the back seat. Because the car died, buddy. Just hang tight. Mary Beth grabbed her cell phone from her purse, but she paused as she considered who to call. Though she'd gotten a promotion this morning, could she really afford the cost of a tow truck? Not really. Not until that new raise kicked in. Which left what options? Her mother had moved away when she remarried, and as Mary Beth was an only child, there was no help there. Holly was an option, but she was bound to still be working at the restaurant. Who knew how long it would be before she could get away? Mary Beth bit her lip. She had never minded having only a few close friends, always telling herself that one really good friend was better than four or five mediocre ones, who would probably be more like acquaintances. That logic had held until now. Now she found herself wishing that she had made more friends than just Holly, even if they weren't close friends. They just had to be close enough that she could pick up the phone and ask for a favor once in a while. Did she have anyone else's number even in her phone? Her teeth bit down on her bottom lip. She did have one other number, not in her phone, but on a card tucked away in her wallet. For emergency use only, she told herself, when she shoved it in one of the credit card holders. She certainly didn't have enough of those to fill all the spaces in her wallet. But did this qualify? It wasn't really a work emergency, but if she ended up having to sleep in her car or walk home and to work tomorrow, she would definitely be late. Her teeth paused their incessant gnawing at her tender lip as she sucked in a deep breath. Yes, she could call him, but did she really want Chance involved? A soft tapping at her window sent her heart thundering out of her chest and a shrill scream tumbling from her lips. As her mind ran through her options, there weren't many. She glanced to the window. Fully expecting to see Colin, she blinked at the sight of Chance outside her window. How in the world had he found her? Mommy, who's that? Lucas called from behind her. No doubt the stranger and her scream had scared him as well. She twisted in her seat to send him a reassuring smile. It's Mommy's boss, buddy. Everything's okay. He just startled me. When she was sure Lucas understood, she reached for the door handle. Her car was old, but not so old that it had crank window handles. 
Another thing Mary Beth had always been thankful for, until now. Once again, she decided that if it weren't for bad luck, she would have no luck at all. Chance stepped back as her door opened. Mary Beth? The shock in his voice told her that he hadn't known it was her, which shouldn't surprise her. He'd always been the type to just pull over and help a random stranger, but really, what were the odds? Hey, Chance, I don't suppose you know anything about engines? She offered an embarrassed shrug as she met his eyes. Not as much as I'd like to, but let me take a look. Can you pop the hood? Could she pop the hood? That was the one thing she was a pro at when it came to this car. She might not know how to change the oil, or a flat tire for that matter, but popping the hood was a regular occurrence. Sure, hang on. She leaned back in, pulling the lever until she heard the familiar soft click. A moment later, Chance had the hood up and was using the light from his phone to scan the engine compartment. See anything? She asked as she leaned against the side. She knew she should have taken the time to learn more about cars after Colin left, but it had just never seemed as important as everything else. However, now, as she stared into the unfamiliar layout and realized the only pieces she could even identify were the battery and the carburetor, it suddenly seemed a little more important. Nothing obvious, but I'm not sure what I'm looking for either. Was there any indication of something wrong? A noise? Smoke? Not really. It has an issue with the carburetor, but usually that's only when it's first starting. I heard a slight sputtering noise, but it just died. Chance glanced up at her, and Mary Beth could swear there was concern in his eyes. What carburetor issue? Her teeth dug into her lip once again. The way he said it made it seem like a much bigger deal than it was. Um, every once in a while, the engine won't start unless I stick a screwdriver in the carburetor. Something about a flap that doesn't open right. Her shoulder lifted in a slight shrug. It's not that big of a deal. His gaze bored into hers. It is a big deal, especially if your son is often with you. How long have you had this car? She held his eyes as long as she could, but the emotion in them forced her to look away. A few years, but I haven't been able to afford a new one. Well, you can now, or you can fix this one if that's what you want. I'll even go with you to find a new car, or check out a mechanic, but you need a safer car. I don't like the thought of you having to use a screwdriver to start your car, and it certainly isn't safe to be stranded on the side of the road at night. So many emotions collided in her head that Mary Beth didn't know where to begin. On one hand, there was relief that she hadn't always been crazy, and that this car was indeed the hunk of junk she had always thought it was. There was also relief that someone had shown up to help them, someone she knew and trusted, or at least had once trusted. But that led to the final emotion. Why was he doing this? Why did he care? He'd broken up with her and left town. So why did he now seem so concerned about her car and her welfare? Yeah, I know the car isn't the best. My dad was supposed to fix it, but then he died and I just never got around to it. Her eyes slid from chances and to the asphalt as the memories of her father's death clawed their way forward. She'd loved her dad, and though she'd been able to say goodbye, his death still felt like it had been too sudden, and she still missed him incredibly every time he appeared in her thoughts. Mary Beth, I'm so sorry. I didn't know about your father. His hands were on her arms, and a part of her wanted to lean into his chest, the way she had in high school. She wanted him to be her rock and wrap his arms around her like he used to while she cried against his shoulder. But she couldn't, because he wasn't that guy for her anymore. He should have known about her father because he should have been there, by her side, the whole time. She stepped back breaking his hold on her arms and hoping it would break the hold he seemed to be having on her emotions as well. Yeah, 
well, you wouldn't have since you left town and never looked back. From the flinch in his face, she could tell her words cut him like a knife. A part of her immediately regretted them, but even as she folded her lips into a tight line, she couldn't find a way to take them back either. Mary Beth. He held his hand out, but she shook her head. They could not have this discussion right now. Not with her traitorous emotions running out of control and threatening to release a floodgate of tears. Not in the dark on the side of the road with her son still in the car. And not until she practiced what she was going to say. There were a lot of aspects about her personality that Mary Beth wished she could change at one point or another, but her ability to have witty comebacks was always the one that kept swimming back to the top. She couldn't even count the number of times she had woken in the middle of the night with the perfect thing to say in response to something someone had said to her weeks before. It was an annoying habit, and one she was fairly certain wouldn't be changing anytime soon. So, instead, she had learned never to get into an emotional discussion until she had carefully crafted and practiced what she was going to say. Look, we can talk about that later. Right now, I just want to get my son home. Can we get the car started? His mouth opened and closed, and she could tell he wanted to say more. Instead, he sighed and shook his head. I don't think so. I'm no mechanic, so I have no idea what's wrong with it, and trial and error could take a while. Why don't you let me take you home tonight and we'll call a tow truck to take it to a mechanic? I don't know if I can afford a tow truck right now, or a mechanic for that matter. The empty cupboards and the repetitive lunches of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches flashed in her mind. She hadn't even made it to the grocery store to buy food yet. Plus, there was still Christmas and presents. I'll set up an advance for you. Her eyes shifted to chance. An advance? Was he serious? I don't know. Look, I know it's not enough to apologize for what I did, but it's a start. Let me do this for you. Sincerity oozed from his voice and his gaze. But she still felt the need to argue. However, before she could utter a word, a soft tapping grabbed her attention, and she glanced back to see Lucas's hand against his window. It was late, and they did need to get home, and Chance was being nice. Maybe she could swallow her pride and allow him to help them. Okay, but how am I going to get to work tomorrow? I doubt seriously any mechanic will be working this late. She folded her arms across her chest in a challenging gesture. Why she felt the need to challenge him, she had no idea, but she seemed unable to stop it. The corners of his lips twitched. Was he fighting a smile? How about I come and pick you up tomorrow? It's not like we aren't going to the same place. Then, during lunch, we can see about your car or go look at new ones. Mary Beth wanted to object, but what he said made sense, and she hated that too. Fine, but just tomorrow. He held up his hands in a surrendering motion and nodded, but she didn't miss the grin that crossed his lips before he ducked his head. This was probably a very bad idea, but what choice did she have? Chapter 11. Chance. The ride to Maribeth's house was odd to say the least. She sat in the front seat next to him, silent, her lips folded into a tight line, while her son sat in the back seat, firing off a barrage of questions at Chance. What is your name? Chance Overstreet. He glanced over at Marybeth, unsure if talking to her son was allowed. She had made it clear that she didn't really want help from him, but it seemed rude to ignore the boy. This was definitely unclear territory. How do you know my mom? Chance paused to see if Mary Beth would answer. He had no idea how much he was supposed to share, but her face remained passive. Um, well, I used to know your mom in high school, and now I'm her boss. 
You knew her in high school? His voice was incredulous. You must be really old. A chuckle burst out of Chance's mouth before he could stop it. I'm not that much older than your mom. So you work at the resort like she does? It was rather dizzying trying to keep up with the boy's train of thought, and Chance wondered how Mary Beth did it every day. Perhaps it got easier when you were around the child every day? That's right. I recently got hired to manage the resort. What does it mean to manage? Um, it meant a lot of things, but how did he explain that to a child? It means that I'm in charge of hiring people and making sure they do their jobs correctly. That sounds important. Chance nodded. It was important, but not as important as apologizing to the woman next to him, he realized. He didn't know what it would take, but he knew that he would have to do something. From the day she came back into his life, he'd felt that gaining her forgiveness needed to be his number one goal. He just wasn't sure how to go about doing that. Lucas continued to fire off questions until Chance pulled up in front of a modest brick house. Though nothing grand, the place was well maintained. The lawn, white with frost now, was trimmed and even, and a swing hung from the branch of a large tree in the yard. Thank you for the ride. Mary Beth unbuckled her seatbelt before the car even came to a complete stop. I can help you in. Chance threw the car in park and reached for the keys to turn off the ignition. No need. We can make it in ourselves. Chance hesitated. His military training insisted that he accompany her to the door. It was rude not to. But he also didn't want to make her uncomfortable. Perhaps he could meet her halfway. If he got out of the car and waited until she entered the house, he could be true to himself and not infringe too much on her wishes. Having decided that was the best course of action, he pushed his door open and stood. About the same time she appeared to get Lucas from his seat behind Chance, they nearly collided, her face reddening as she took a step back from him. I told you walking me in was unnecessary. She shot him a pointed look as she extracted Lucas from the car. I'm not walking you in, but remaining in the car feels rude to me. So, if you don't mind, I will stand and wait until you make it inside. If that's what you feel you need to do. She adjusted Lucas's hat, though it hadn't been askew before meeting his eyes again. What time will you be by in the morning? I will need time to drop Lucas off as well. 7.30? As long as your daycare provider is close, that should give us plenty of time. She issued a curt nod. That should be fine. We'll be ready. As Chance watched her walk inside, he leaned against the side of the car and wondered how he was going to break through her wall. He certainly didn't blame her for constructing it, but he was determined to show her he'd changed, especially after the talk with his mother earlier. Not only was he no longer the scared teen who'd left town and her nearly a decade ago, but he was coming to grips with the fact that his father's leaving hadn't been his fault. That revelation meant he was capable of love, and his time in the military and the death and destruction he had seen had shown him how important it was. Now he wanted it more than ever. Mary Beth paused at the front door and flashed him a small wave before stepping inside and shutting the door. It wasn't much, but it was something, and he could work with something. Smiling to himself, he climbed back in the car and headed to his house. The small house didn't feel exactly like home yet, as boxes still littered the floors. Even though he had spent the weekend unpacking, and the house was still devoid of character, something he hoped to fix before Christmas came. Christmas hadn't been his favorite season in a long time, but he had hope that this year it might be different. Suddenly, a loud explosion filled the air. 
Though Chance knew it was just the sound of a car backfiring, he could not help being transported back to the desert. The smell of smoke filled his nostrils and he crumpled to the floor, hands clasping his head. His ears rang as pain echoed through his head. Gents, come on, you have to help me some. Chance opened his eyes to see Israel leaning close to him. Is? Yeah, it's me, we have to hurry. Can you move your legs? Chance blinked to try and rein in his focus. Blood dripped from a cut above Israel's eye, and black smudges covered his face. I think so. But as he put pressure on his leg, a searing pain shot through his thigh. Suddenly, the smoke faded, and the ringing in his ears stilled. The pain in his thigh, however, continued to throb. And as he opened his eyes, Chance realized he had collapsed to the floor and fallen on his injured leg. He rubbed a hand down the sore muscle, realizing he would have to see his therapist again soon. And then he remembered that he hadn't found a therapist here in Courage yet. He'd been hoping he wouldn't need to, but that had obviously been wishful thinking. He would have to add that to his ever-growing list. He blew out a frustrated breath and lifted his face to the ceiling. Prayer hadn't been at the top of his list or the front of his mind for a while now, and definitely not since the accident. Losing his friends and being discharged from the military had been his excuse for why, but in all honesty, he had merely been going through the motions for longer than he cared to admit. Lord, I've messed things up pretty good trying to do things on my own. I could use some of your help and guidance. Help me find a way to make amends with Mary Beth and help me to focus on the future instead of living in the past. Also, help me to forgive my father. Though there was no audible answer, a sense of a weight being lifted from Chance's shoulders filled him and he exhaled in relief. He could do this. It might not have been the life he planned for himself, and it might be a lot harder than he would have wished for, but he could do it. When the pain in his legs subsided, he stood and made his way over to his desk. Before he turned in for the night, there was one more thing he had to do, something he'd been avoiding for way too long. He lifted the lid of the laptop and opened his email. As the blinking cursor stared at him, he tried to think of the words he could say to the friend who had saved his life and who he had abandoned the last few months. Though definitely not enough, I'm sorry seemed like the perfect place to start. Hey, Israel. I'm sorry it's been so long since I've written. The transition back to civilian life was much harder than I thought it would be, as was returning to my hometown. I'm working, though, managing a resort, if you can believe that. I know you still have some time to finish out your tour, but it would be good to see you when you get back in the States. I'll hook you up with a stay on the house. Chance paused and glanced back over the words. They didn't say everything he was feeling. He owed the man his life, after all. But he hoped Israel would be able to read the meaning between the lines. Stay safe, brother. I wish I were still there with you. Chance. His finger paused just a moment before clicking on the send button. Once he sent it, there was no getting it back. But just like Mary Beth, he owed Israel more than just an apology. With the email sent, he closed the laptop and made his way toward his bedroom. Today had been challenging, but tomorrow offered new opportunities, and that was something to look forward to. Chapter 12 Mary Beth Mary Beth checked her watch again. It was only 7.35, but it wasn't like chance to be late. Or, at least not like the old chance. Of course, it had been eight years. Perhaps he had lost his punctuality. Or maybe he'd forgotten he promised to pick her up. That didn't seem likely, since he'd promised a little more than 12 hours ago. She bit her lip as she considered her options. His card was still in her wallet, so she could call him 
But would that seem desperate or demanding? He was her boss, after all. Ugh, this whole situation with her being his assistant was just tricky. There was Holly, but she closed the restaurant most nights, and therefore slept in most mornings. Mary Beth didn't really want to interrupt her routine or her sleep. Holly could be a bear when she was tired. Are you not going to work today, Mommy? Mary Beth glanced down at Lucas, who for once stood ready to go. We're waiting for Mr. Chance, buddy. You know the guy who dropped us off last night? A large grin split Lucas's lips. He seemed nice, but why didn't you talk to him if you guys are friends? Oh dear, that was a difficult question to answer even for herself, much less try to explain to a five-year-old. Thankfully, she was saved from answering by a knock on the door. Chance stood on the other side, wearing an apologetic expression. I'm sorry I'm late. My car had a flat tire this morning. I must have run over something last night. Dread flooded Mary Beth as she thought back to the conversation with Edith the night before. Could the man have been Colin? And if it had been, had he followed Chance home? She certainly wouldn't put it past him to lash out at Chance if he thought something was going on between the two of them. But why would he even be back? He'd made it perfectly clear when he left that he hadn't wanted a family. Could he have changed his mind? But then why not reach out to her? Maybe it wasn't Colin. Perhaps Chance really had just run over something. And maybe the man yesterday had been watching something else. She sounded paranoid. If she said this aloud, especially without proof, Chance might think she was crazy and retract his offer, or fire her, neither of which she could afford right now. But if she didn't tell Chance, and it did turn out to be Colin, Chance could get hurt. Oh, dear. Did you find anything in the tire? Chance's forehead furrowed as he looked at her. Nothing that I could see, but I'll take it into the shop. They should be able to tell me. What's going on, Mary Beth? She sighed and glanced over her shoulder to make sure Lucas was out of hearing range. My daycare provider told me there was a man watching Lucas play yesterday. I don't have any evidence, but I think it might be Lucas's father. He's not in the picture anymore, but he's not a good guy. The lines in Chance's face hardened in concern. Would he go after you? After Lucas? I don't know. He left before Lucas was two. I don't think Lucas even remembers him. But Colin was unstable. If he's back in town, there's no telling what he might do. Chance's mouth pulled into a thin line. Even more reason to make sure we get you a working car. Also, maybe you should consider letting me drive you to and from work every day until we know for sure it's not him or he goes away. Mary Beth blinked at Chance. She was grateful for his help the night before, but he was not her boyfriend any longer. He couldn't come in and start tossing orders around like they were still together. She lifted her chin and forced her voice to stay steady. I appreciate your concern, Chance, but we aren't together any longer. I'm telling you so that you can stay safe, not so you can run my life. His face jerked as if she'd slapped him with her hand and not just with her words. I wasn't trying to run your life, Mary Beth. I know I messed up, but I really am just trying to help. Mary Beth sighed. She was letting her emotions take control of her words, and that wasn't like her. I'm sorry, Chance. You're right. This whole situation with my car and Colin has me stressed, but I shouldn't be taking it out on you. He ran his hand through his hair and shook his head. You have every reason to feel the way you do, but I'm not that same guy who left eight years ago. And one way or another, I'm going to make it up to you. Mary Beth highly doubted that, but arguing about it now wasn't going to help either one of them. Look, we're going to be late. Perhaps we can agree to disagree on this and get going? Though his eyes indicated that he wanted to keep talking, he nodded and stepped back. 
allowing her room to get by him. Lucas, let's go, she called, locking the door behind them when they were both out of the house. Mary Beth gave Chance directions to Edith's place, hoping he would stay in the car when they arrived. She was going to get enough questions from the woman as it was, arriving in an unknown car. She didn't need the woman seeing Chance and making assumptions. I'll be right back, Mary Beth said as he pulled into the driveway. Her seatbelt was undone and her hand on the door handle before he even put the car in park. Do you need help? Mary Beth shook her head so hard that strands of her hair smacked her eyes. No! She brushed the strands back and took a breath. That word had come out harsher than she intended. Please, just let me drop him off. I'll explain later. Chance held his hands up in surrender, and she pushed open her door, extracted Lucas from the back seat, and hurried up the walk. That's not your normal car! Edith tried to peer past her. Whose car is that? Just a friend, Edith. Mary Beth grabbed the iPad and signed Lucas in, before placing a hurried kiss on his forehead. My car broke down last night, and a friend from work offered to drive me in today. His name is Chance, and he's nice, Lucas said with a large grin. Mary Beth closed her eyes and sighed. She had been hoping not to share that information. Have a good day, buddy. Wait, who's Chance? Edith called as Mary Beth hurried down the porch steps. Sorry, Edith, I'm late for work. She knew it was a little childish to dodge the woman's questions, but she also knew that the woman would not be satisfied with the truth. Edith always thought there was more to the story and there was definitely nothing more going on with Chance. You're right, that was fast, Chance said with a chuckle as she slid into the seat. Sorry, but that's Edith. She's nosy, and I knew if she saw you, the questions would never end. Especially after the incident yesterday. The smile slid from Chance's face. About that, is there something to worry about there? Mary Beth tucked a strand behind her ear and debated how much to tell Chance. There was a time she would have told him anything, but that was ages ago. She barely knew him now, but he was her boss. If there was a chance Colin might show up and do something, Chance probably needed to know. I don't know. Colin and I met a few years after you left town, he was the first man who paid real attention to me after you, and he seemed nice. Until we got married. Then this whole other side of him emerged. She turned her attention out the window, not wanting to see the pity on Chance's face as she recounted how stupid she'd been. He began going out with his friends and staying out late at night. A few times he even came home drunk. But things didn't really get bad until after Lucas was born. Maybe it was the late-night crying, or the noise, or the extra cost. She took a shaky breath and tried not to dwell on the dark memories. I'm not sure what happened, but one night, he packed up his things. He said he hadn't signed up for a kid and he left. That was the last I heard from him. He didn't even attend court when I filed for divorce, just sent in the signed paper. Though he left me the house, I always wondered if he'd be back. For it? For Lucas? Silence filled the car when she finished, and Mary Beth fought the urge to look at Chance to gauge what he was thinking. But he was never violent, no criminal history. She shook her head and turned to face him. Not that I know of, but that was three years ago. I don't know what he's been up to since. Chance lifted his right hand from the steering wheel long enough to drag it across his chin. You certainly don't have to tell me, but if you're comfortable, I'd like to give security a description of him. That way, if he does come into the hotel, we'll get a heads up. Security? Do you think that's really necessary? Mary Beth had always prided herself on living a drama-free life. Now, when she wanted to blend in and not be a bother the most, this was happening? Chance shrugged. 
maybe not. But my time in the military taught me a lot of important things, one of them being that you can never be too careful. She wondered what else his time in the military had taught him and if it was possible that he had changed. There were definitely aspects in his demeanor now that hadn't been there when he was 19. He had a depth to him that hadn't been there before, and he seemed to think about things longer and more deeply than he once had. But whether those changes were from the military or simply the passage of time, she didn't know. I'll give you the information, though I don't think it will be necessary. We'll stop at security first, then, Chance said as he pulled into the parking lot of the resort. Mary Beth sighed as she opened her door. She had a feeling this was going to be a very long day indeed. Chapter 13 Chance Chance tried not to limp as he walked beside Mary Beth into the resort, but his leg still throbbed from his fall yesterday. The pain didn't flare up often, but when it did, it was hard to think about anything other than the heat that licked up and down his leg. As he rubbed a hand down his thigh, his movement caught Mary Beth's attention, and she turned discerning eyes on him. Are you okay? He should just tell her the truth. After all, she had told him about her ex, and she had those eagle eyes about her. She'd always known when something was wrong, and she would no doubt see through his facade this time as well. But he couldn't tell her yet. He knew that the way she looked at him would change, as soon as she knew about his injury. It had for everyone else, and he needed her forgiveness before her pity. It's nothing. I just slept on it wrong is all. She narrowed her gaze at him, and he could see the wheels turning behind her eyes. But she said nothing more. A moment later, they reached the front entrance, and he pulled the door open for her. The security office was on the first floor, nestled far back in the corner, and manned by a large man who went by the name of Dougie. Chance had heard that the nickname was based on his last name of Douglas, but he had yet to officially meet the man. He'd also heard the man was a big teddy bear, but when he entered the office and Dougie stood, he found himself pausing mid-step. The man was huge. Chance was no small man, standing at six foot one and weighing just under 200 pounds, but Dougie had to be at least three inches taller and 40 pounds heavier. However, it was clear every inch of the man was pure muscle. Hey, Mary Beth. What brings you down my way? Dougie's voice was as smooth as his chocolatey skin, and the white of his teeth only made his smile even brighter. It was obvious from the way he looked at Mary Beth that he held her in high esteem, which didn't surprise Chance in the least, but did increase the guilt he was already battling for his treatment of her. Mary Beth's smile appeared forced, but her voice held the same sweet melody it always did. Hey, Dougie, I don't know if you've met Chance yet, but he's the new manager here. Chance wouldn't have thought it possible, but Dougie appeared to stand up a little straighter as his eyes flicked to Chance. Yes, sir. Nice to meet you. I'm sorry I haven't made it to your office yet. I should be the one apologizing, Chance said with a shake of his head. I wanted to meet everyone in my first few days, but it's been a little busy. A deep chuckle spilled out of Dougie's lips as he nodded. It's a big place for sure, but I am glad to meet you. However, I somehow doubt you came all the way down here just to say hello. No, I'm afraid we didn't. Chance turned to Mary Beth. Though he was the one who had suggested this, it was really her story to tell. But she looked like sharing it was the last thing she wanted to do. Dougie's eyes shifted between them as the silence grew heavier. Finally, Mary Beth sucked in a deep breath and began. Yesterday, my daycare provider told me that some guy was watching Lucas play. She doesn't know what my ex looks like, but I'm worried that he may be back in the picture. Dougie's face hardened into a fiercely protective expression, 
but Mary Beth wasn't quite done. Then, last night, my car broke down on the way home. I don't think that had anything to do with Colin, but chance happened upon us and gave us a ride home. This morning, he had a flat tire. It could be purely coincidental, but Chance wanted me to give you his description so you could keep an eye out for him. I think that all sounds too coincidental, Mary Beth, and I agree with Chance here. Better to be safe than sorry. He grabbed a pen and paper from the top of his desk and turned expectant eyes to Mary Beth. You give me his description, and I'll make sure everyone knows to watch out for him. I'm not sure how much a description will help. He's pretty ordinary. Tall. She glanced at Chance. About an inch shorter than Chance. Brown hair, brown eyes, no distinguishing features. But I do have an old picture back at my place. Maybe we can swing by at lunch and pick it up? She posed the question at Chance, and he found himself nodding before he had completely processed her request. Yeah, we can do that. We need to see about your car anyway. Okay, I've got this down. You bring me back that picture, Mary Beth, and we'll make sure we keep an eye out. Thanks, Dougie. I appreciate it. We're family here. That's what we do. He said the words at Mary Beth, but he shot a pointed look at Chance as well, as if indicating it was his job to look out for Mary Beth as well. Chance didn't need the reminder. He had failed Mary Beth once, and he was determined not to do it again. I think that was highly unnecessary, Mary Beth said as they left the security office. Maybe, but what if it is Colin? Won't you feel better knowing that if he does come after you, that people are watching out for you? She looked up at him, questions brimming in her bright blue eyes. Would you do this for any employee chance? Or is this because it's me? The question hurt him, but he could understand it. After all, she had never questioned his motives until he gave her a reason to. Now that I'm the manager, the safety of every employee is my priority. But I won't deny that it feels more urgent because it's you. As she held his gaze, he wished he could read her mind. She had said they needed to forget their past, but he was finding that hard to do, especially as the need to protect her burned within him. We should get to work, she said, after stretching the moment out another second or two. If we're taking an extended lunch today, we'll need to be focused to get everything done before the Christmas parade. It's only a week away. Right. Work. Maybe he had made a mistake in hiring Mary Beth to be his assistant. Because while he knew his focus should be on the upcoming parade, it was almost entirely focused on the feisty woman who now led the way to his office. Maybe he could give her an assignment that would keep her out of sight for a few hours. Out of sight meant out of mind, right? Even as the thought entered his mind, he rolled his eyes at the absurdity of it. Whoever had made that claim had not had Mary Beth Martin on their mind. Chance was surprised when the rumbling of his stomach told him it was lunchtime three hours later. Somehow, he had managed to get engrossed enough in work to forget about watching the clock in the chance that Mary Beth's ex would make an appearance. He glanced up at the knock on his doorframe. Mary Beth offered a thin smile and lifted her eyebrows. I verified all the floats for the parade, and it appears we are good to go. Also, my stomach is hinting that it might be nearing lunchtime. Do you want to eat or run errands first? Normally, he would have said errands first. He hated feeling rushed to eat, but the rumbling of his own stomach, coupled with the throbbing pain in his leg, told him food should probably be their first stop. He needed to pop a few painkillers, and they always wrecked havoc in his body if he took them on an empty stomach. Lunch sounds good. How about we go to this restaurant I've been hearing about? Maples or something? The color drained from her face, as if he'd mentioned eating her favorite pet instead of trying a new restaurant, and she shook her head. No, I've heard that place is always busy at lunch. Long wait times. With everything we have to do, we should pick a place that will serve us faster. He narrowed his eyes at her, wondering what the real story was. 
but in all reality, it didn't matter to him where they ate. Just getting to spend time with her and make sure she was safe was all that mattered to him. Okay, well, you know the town better than I do now. Where do you suggest? There is a really good deli downtown. Not only is the food good, but you can usually get in and out in under half an hour. Sounds good. Let's go. The deli turned out to be a good choice. Though it was hopping, the line moved quickly, and they were sitting at a table with their food in under ten minutes. Chance bowed his head to say grace, and was surprised to see Mary Beth staring at him when he finished. What, you don't say grace anymore? Of course I do. I just didn't know you still did. It seemed you were lost the last time we spoke. Chance's mind wandered back to their last few conversations. He had been lost, or at least questioning his faith. Church for him had mainly been something his parents dragged him to every Sunday. Oh, he believed in God, but he didn't really want to change his life or anything. Then, when his father had revealed his affair, church lost the little meaning it had held. If his father, who claimed to be a Christian, could do that, then maybe Chance wanted nothing to do with the church. Once he joined the military, there was no one to even drag him to the building anymore. The men in his dorms had been young and single and much more interested in meeting up for beers than meeting up for church. You're right, I was. Or maybe more accurately, I'm not sure I really was a believer until a few months ago. Mary Beth pursed her lips together as her eyes studied his face. What happened a few months ago? He took a deep breath as he remembered vividly the night he had given his life to God, really and truly given it to him. It had been the night he'd woken with cold sweats from flashbacks of the explosion and a throbbing pain in his leg from thrashing in the bed. The sheets had been wound around him so tightly that he'd fallen out of bed trying to untangle himself. Hitting the floor had not only been the lowest point in his bedroom, but also the lowest point in his life. He hated himself for surviving, hated himself for being injured, and hated himself for not being able to do the job he'd once done. Somehow, in the depths of the pain and self-loathing, a conversation he'd once had with Israel entered his mind. They'd been sitting in the barracks with their shirts off due to the oppressing heat, and Chance had asked him about his many religious tattoos. Why do you have so many crosses and Bible verses tattooed on you? Israel smiled and leaned back. In this country, you have always had freedom, but where I come from, it was different. There was always violence and war. When the noise would start, my mama would take us into a closet, and she would pray. People have asked me how I know God is real, and I tell them, I know he is real because I felt him there in that closet every time my mama prayed. And we would go to church when we could. Even church wasn't always safe, but I always felt safe inside that building. I knew God would go with me anywhere, but I wanted these physical reminders so that when I was weak and forgot, I could look down and see his promise to me. Chance had brushed the words off as part of Israel's personality the man did nothing halfway, so it made sense his religion would be the same way, but they hadn't settled on chance at the time. However, as he had lain on the floor, broken and in pain, they had made sense then, and he had asked God to show him the same peace that Israel always carried. Perhaps he had accepted God into his heart when he was younger, but he certainly hadn't understood what that meant until that night. Let's just say God got a hold of me. I finally understand that passage about Jacob wrestling with God. Mary Beth's eyes perused his face, as if she was reading the past eight years on his face. And maybe she was. She was discerning, and he had no idea what his expression was saying. Why did you really leave, Chance? This time, his breath came out as a loud sigh. He had known this question would come up sooner or later. He just hoped she would accept his answer. Honestly, because I was scared? My dad's affair really rocked me. I wasn't lying about that. But mostly, I was scared that I would do the same thing to you. 
I knew I was like him in a lot of ways, and I was scared that I would hurt you the way he hurt me, the way he hurt my mother. I told myself I was doing what was best for both of us, but I was just being scared and selfish. She took a bite of her sandwich and chewed, but he knew she was just taking time to formulate her thoughts. It was a habit that carried over from high school. She had always been the type to think before she spoke, so much so that she often lost her chance at a witty comeback, something she had vented to him often about. He tried to remain patient and took a bite of his own sandwich. Of course, she chose that minute to finish chewing and pose her question. So, what changed? He held up a finger while he swallowed his own bite. I haven't told you why I'm not still in the military, have I? Mary Beth shook her head. It's not by choice. At least it wasn't at first. A few months ago, our tank hit an IED. All of the men were killed except myself and one other guy. Her eyes widened as her hand flew to her mouth. Chance, I'm so sorry. Is that why you're home? Chance bit the inside of his lip. He hadn't wanted to tell her about his injury this morning, but now that it was front and center of the conversation, he couldn't really avoid it without lying to her. And he wasn't going to do that. Not anymore. No, I was sent back to my base. Due to an injury. I spent several months working a desk job and going through therapy. In the hopes that I'd be able to return to combat. But even after all that, they told me I'd be stuck behind a desk for the rest of my career. When it came time for re-enlistment, I decided not to sign. And since there was nothing for me in North Carolina, I came home. You're limp this morning. It wasn't a question, but a statement of fact. He nodded. The shrapnel destroyed some of the muscle in my thigh, and the pain still flares up from time to time. Anyway, it was that experience, the injury and losing my friends, that opened my eyes to what I'd become, and what I was missing. I know I can't take back the years, but I am sorry. I'm sorry for letting fear win and leaving you here. He wasn't sure what he expected her reaction to be, but he was wholly unprepared for her to simply nod and return to eating. What exactly did that mean? Chapter 14, Mary Beth At least four times on the drive to the mechanic shop, Mary Beth opened her mouth as if to speak and then closed it again. She knew that Chance had expected a response to his revelation, and she wanted to give him one, but she wasn't sure what to say yet. Her head wanted to tell him that she appreciated his apology, but it didn't make a difference in her feelings. They still needed to remain merely co-workers. Unfortunately, her heart had a different take entirely. Her heart wanted to tell him that she understood. His father's affair had rocked everyone and she'd felt even then that he was breaking off their relationship out of fear. She had made poor choices along the way as well. Even though she wouldn't trade Lucas for the world, Colin could easily be described as one of those poor choices. So she definitely understood, and she could even see that he had changed. He was not only more solid physically, but she could see that he was mentally as well or that he wanted her to think he was. And that was the real issue, not chance so much as herself. She'd always thought her judgment was sound, but then chance had broken up with her when she'd thought he was going to propose. After she'd picked up the pieces and reassembled herself, she'd fallen for Colin, who'd left her. Everything in the last few years pointed to the fact that she might be a terrible judge of character and actions. So how could she trust her own judgment of his honesty? He had rescued her last night, picked her up this morning, and encouraged her to alert Dougie about Colin. Now he was spending his lunch hour running her around town to pick up a picture and check on her car. Maybe he was just doing it to be nice, or maybe he would do it for any employee. But she couldn't help but think that at least some of it was because he still had feelings for her. And as much as she wanted to deny it, 
she still had feelings for him as well. But would opening her heart to him a second time be wise? The shop where her car had been towed was a small operation not far from the deli. Both garage bay doors were open, and she could see her Oldsmobile up on a lift. She hoped that meant they had found the problem and were able to fix it. As she stepped out of the car, the smell of oil and rubber filled the air. Chance fell into step beside her as she approached the greasy man behind the counter. Can I help you? The man pulled a dirty rag from the pocket of his equally dirty overalls and proceeded to wipe his hands on it. However, they were no less black when he finished and shoved the rag back into his pocket. I'm the owner of the Oldsmobile that was brought in. I was hoping you'd be able to tell me what was wrong and how much it will be to fix it. Yep, I actually just finished looking over that one. Appears to be a bad catalytic converter. It's fixable, and the part isn't that expensive. Labor and parts will be about 500 500 If that wasn't expensive, she would hate to hear a number that was. The words felt like a punch to her gut, and while Mary Beth figured it could be worse, she didn't really have that kind of money laying around. Still, it would be cheaper to fix the car than get a new one, at least for now. How long will that take? Shouldn't take more than a day once we get the part in. You don't have it here? How long was this job going to take? She couldn't be without a car for weeks, and she couldn't ask Chance to keep picking her up and dropping her off. The man shook his head. Nope. I'll have to call around. If I can find it local, we can probably have the car back to you tomorrow. She didn't want to ask, but she had to know. And if you can't find it local? He shrugged. Best guess would be three or four days, maybe a week. A week? The words exploded out of her mouth before she could stop them. I can't be without my car for a week? Chance placed a hand on her arm. Why don't we wait and see if he can find anything local? If not, we'll see about getting you a rental car for a few days. She didn't want to have to get a rental car for a few days, and she didn't want to have to ask Chance for any more rides, but it appeared the situation was out of her hands. Was it just a coincidence, or was this God giving her opportunities to see Chance in a new light? Fine. The man behind the counter nodded. Okay. Let me just get your information, and I'll call you as soon as I have an answer. Are you able to fix the carburetor issue as well? Chance asked when Mary Beth finished giving her information. Chance, it's fine. Though the carburetor issue was annoying, Mary Beth saw the dollar signs rising with every problem they pointed out. No, it's not fine, he said to her before turning his attention back to the mechanic. She has to use a screwdriver to keep the flap open to start the car. The mechanic looked from Chance to Mary Beth as if deciding who was in charge and therefore should be the one he addressed, he finally decided on chance. I'll take a look, but it should be an easy fix. That wasn't necessary, Mary Beth hissed to chance as they exited the garage. It was completely necessary, Mary Beth. Having to stick a screwdriver in your engine to start your car isn't safe and it makes no sense not to have him look at it while he's addressing the converter issue. Look, I know you said you wanted to make up for before. This isn't about what I said at the restaurant, Chance said, interrupting her. This is about making sure you're safe when you're driving around with your son. That's all. Mary Beth stared at him, sure that she should say more, but unsure of what those words should be. He matched her stare, as if daring her to contradict her own safety. Fine. The word felt like an admission of weakness, but Chance did have a point. Let's just go get that picture and get back to work. A small smile played across Chance's lips, which infuriated Mary Beth even more. He seemed to be enjoying playing her protector more than she thought he should. But she also couldn't deny that it felt a little nice. It had been so long since someone had looked out for her. 
But why did it have to be the one man she had sworn never to fall for again? The ride to her house was quiet, but not entirely uncomfortable, as if they both were trying to figure out where this left them now. Still, relief that she'd have a few minutes to herself, away from his gaze, flooded her as he pulled into her driveway. Her hand was on the handle before the car was fully stopped, and the words, I'll be right back, flew out of her mouth as he put the car in park. Though he looked as if he wanted to argue, he simply nodded, and she bolted out of the car before he could change his mind. The old picture of her and Colin was the only one she had kept, and only because she wanted to have something to show Lucas if he asked one day. She found it tucked inside Lucas's baby book, where she had stashed it years ago, knowing he would never look there, and turned to head back outside. As she did, though, something caught her eye. It was just a picture in a frame, one that Holly had taken of her standing behind Lucas as he blew out the candles on his birthday cake, but it was on the wrong shelf. She always kept the picture frames on the highest shelf, so that Lucas didn't knock them over by accident, as he was prone to do when reaching for his coloring books that she kept on the lower shelf. But now that frame was on the middle shelf. Had she moved it when she dusted last and forgotten to put it back? She didn't think so. And as she turned to scan the rest of the room, an eerie feeling that someone had been in her house settled on her shoulders. Fear rooted her feet to the floor. Should she go and check the rest of the house to see if anything was missing? That seemed logical, unless whoever had been in her house was still there. Suddenly, the only thing she wanted was to get out of her house. With the picture firmly in her hand, she dashed for the door, locking it behind her. What's wrong? Chance asked as she slid into the seat. A part of her didn't want to tell him. She didn't need him any more involved until she sorted out her feelings. But she could tell from the pounding of her heart in her ears that she must look as frightened as she felt. Maybe nothing, but I think someone's been in my house. As she'd expected, his jaw clenched and his gaze hardened. Give me your key. What? Why? I'm going to make sure no one is still in the house. Mary Beth shook her head as she pictured the interior of her house. It wasn't as neat as she would like it to be, especially if her ex was going to be poking around in it. However, she did have a five-year-old, who was notorious for making another mess as soon as she picked one up, and Chance was bound to understand that. You don't have to do that. I know I don't have to, but I'm not letting you go back into that house until I know it's safe. Besides, I was trained for stuff like this. Mary Beth thought about mentioning his injury, but the intensity in his eyes told her that he wasn't going to take no for an answer, regardless of what she said. She held out her keys and watched as he entered her house. The minutes seemed to drag by, and she debated joining him, but before she could decide, Chance reappeared. Did you see anyone? she asked as soon as he slid back into the driver's seat. He shook his head as he held out her keys. No one, and it didn't look ransacked. How did you know someone had been in there? Mary Beth bit her lip. Would he think she was crazy? There was a picture frame in the wrong place. I know that sounds nuts, but I always keep them up high because of Lucas, and it was on the second shelf. I don't think you're nuts. We know someone was watching Lucas the other day. Whether it's your ex or not, he could have followed you home. I didn't see any sign of a break-in, though. Does he have a key? Disbelief at her stupidity flooded Mary Beth as she thought back to the meeting with her lawyer and her mouth fell open. Colin had given her the house three years ago, but he hadn't returned his key. In the moment, she had thought little of it but now she couldn't believe she hadn't demanded his key. I never thought to ask for it back. At first, I think I was just shocked that he would leave his son, and then maybe relieved that he'd left us the house. She dropped her head into her hand. I am so stupid. Chance pulled her hand down and placed a finger under her chin to lift her eyes to his. 
You're not stupid. You were doing what you thought was right. Unfortunately, now it seems that your house is no longer safe. I'd like you and Lucas to stay at the resort. Marybeth shook her head. She couldn't do that. Every fiber of her being felt like she was infringing on chance as it was. An uprooting Lucas could turn into a headache. Just for a night or two. At least until we get the locks changed. Please? She wanted to say no. She hated the fact that Colin was uprooting her life even though they were no longer together. She hated that Chance was swooping in like her savior after he'd left her. She hated that she was supposed to be mad at him. But all she wanted to do right now, as he stared intently at her with eyes full of concern, was lean forward and taste his lips again. Okay. Good. He dropped his hand from her chin, and Mary Beth immediately missed the warmth of his touch. What was wrong with her? She was not supposed to be having feelings for chance. Let's grab what you'll need while we're here. Besides, he said with a smile, at least this way you won't have to worry about getting to work without a car. She rolled her eyes even as she chuckled. Finding the bright side was supposed to be her job. I'll still have to get Lucas to Edith's, though. A mysterious twinkle lit up Chance's eyes. What if you don't? What do you mean? I mean, what if we can find a way to entertain him at the lodge? That way he could be close, and you could keep a better eye on him. Mary Beth loved the idea, but Chance had clearly forgotten the one major problem with his plan. That would be amazing, but we don't have an on-site daycare. Not yet, but maybe it's time we change that. Chapter 15 Chance Chance could not believe the requirements he was going to have to go through to put a child care center in the resort. There were space guidelines, licensing guidelines, tax guidelines. All of it made his head swim. But he would do it for Mary Beth and for the other employees who had children. Honestly, he had been surprised the resort didn't already have such a place, especially because it could also be used for guests of the resort, who needed a few hours of peace. Mary Beth hadn't been ecstatic about having to leave her house. Not that he could blame her, but she had perked up at the mention of an on-site center. He hoped she would be as excited about the babysitter he had hired to entertain Lucas the next few days while she stayed at the resort. It wasn't the full center experience, but it would still allow her to keep Lucas close and work. Unfortunately, it would take him a bit longer to get the center up and running, but he was determined to make it a priority. He added the steps to his to-do list for the morning and had just turned off his computer for the night when his cell phone rang. The number was local, but not one he recognized. This is Chance Overstreet. Hello, Mr. Overstreet. This is Matt from Tire City. Right, his flat tire. He had dropped the tire off during their lunch errands to be inspected and re-aired, but hadn't expected a call so soon. Yes, Matt. Did you find any reason for the flat? I'm afraid we did. A close inspection revealed a small slash in the tire and from the clean edges, it appears deliberate. You'll need to purchase a new tire. It wasn't what he'd hoped to hear, but it wasn't entirely unexpected. It did, however, increase his concern for Mary Beth's and Lucas's safety, and he was glad they would be staying at the resort. In fact, he might even check to see if there was a free room he could stay in as well. The thought of being even 20 minutes away should something happen left a sick feeling in his stomach. Thanks, Matt. Can you get a replacement ready for me tomorrow, and I'll swing by and pick it up? Sure thing. Chance checked his watch as he hung up the phone. Ten till five. Mary Beth would be popping in his office soon so they could go pick up Lucas. He turned the computer back on, thankful that it was new and would therefore boot quickly. As soon as the screen came to life, he navigated to the booking site and secured a room for himself down the hall from Mary Beth's. As he clicked the button to finalize it, he wondered briefly what he was doing. After all, he'd been the one to leave her eight years ago. 
Plus, it was obvious from her reaction at lunch that she wasn't quite ready to let him back in her life, but it didn't seem to matter to him. He might have managed to convince himself that he didn't care for her all those years ago, but seeing her in danger had definitely done something to his heart, and there was no denying that he cared for her now. Hey, you about ready? At the sound of her voice in the doorway, he pressed the button to shut the computer down once again. She didn't need to know that someone had knifed his tires, or that he was so worried about her safety that he had booked a room down the hall from her. He would just have to be super careful that she didn't see him. Yep, good to go. He grabbed his coat from the back of his chair and shoved his arms in the sleeves. Hey, what do you say we grab dinner after picking Lucas up? I feel like a pizza, and there's no way I could eat one alone. Plus, it's rather lonely eating dinner alone. He flashed his most charming smile and wiggled his eyebrows at her. An indention appeared in her cheek, a sure sign she was biting the inside of it, but she nodded. Pizza sounds good, and I've been craving it too. Money's been so tight lately that we've been living off ramen and sandwiches, so I'm sure Lucas will be game too. He didn't know if she had meant to let the information about her finances, or lack of them really, slip, but he decided not to say anything in case she hadn't. Is Gitano's still open? Gitano's had been the hangout before football games in high school. Run by an Italian immigrant, the food was not only delicious, but authentic, and the atmosphere had always been lively. Her eyes widened. You remember Gitano's? Are you kidding? I tried a pizza place everywhere I went after I moved, hoping to find one that could compare, but nothing came close. He flicked off the office lights and stepped into the hallway. Perhaps you shouldn't have left then. There was a teasing note in her voice, but her words caught him squarely in the chest. I know I shouldn't have. Her smile faltered as his words sunk in. Chance, I... Mary Beth, I know I messed up, he said, cutting her off before she could say anything that might keep him from sharing his heart. But I need you to know that I never meant to hurt you. I honestly thought at the time that I was doing what was right for both of us, and if I could go back in time and change things, I would. She held his gaze, her eyes flicking back and forth as she studied him. We better go. I don't want Lucas to think I forgot him. Chance tried not to sigh as he led the way to the parking lot. Mary Beth was a tough cookie, but he knew that already. Somehow, he would find a way into her heart again. Chapter 16 Mary Beth Mary Beth tried not to look at Chance as they drove to Edith's. She appreciated all he was doing for her but a part of her wished he would stop looking at her with those big brown eyes and that expression that said he wanted to try again. She could feel it, hiding behind every apology, just waiting in the wings like an understudy, ready to swoop in and steal the limelight, but she wasn't ready to hear it yet. Oh, there was definitely a part of her that wanted to hear it, that teenage girl part of her that still went weak in the knee and swoony every time Chance was around. But the grown-up side of her wasn't ready for two very important reasons. First, she wasn't sure how she felt. Yes, she appreciated the raise and the fierce protection he was displaying, but was it enough to open her heart again? She'd done that once, and the results hadn't been pretty. But it had only been her at the time. Now there was Lucas to consider, too. Even agreeing to this dinner was risky, because Lucas formed attachments quickly. He needed a man in his life, but one who was going to stick around, and she just wasn't sure that Chance wouldn't up and run again. Second, she needed to know that his feelings were really about her, and not just his need to protect her. Even in high school, he'd been protective of her, but she chalked it up as part of his personality. Plus, she had been less sure of herself then, and more in need of protection. High school could be a cruel world. But what if these feelings of attraction were really protective feelings that
that would disappear once she was no longer in danger. Let me guess, wait in the car? Chance asked as he pulled to a stop in Edith's driveway. Mary Beth flashed an apologetic look in his direction. If you don't mind, I'll be just a minute. Take all the time you need. I'll be here, at least until my stomach decides to throw a coup from hunger. His easygoing smile told her that his words were sincere, and she returned the gesture before exiting the car. Edith opened the door before Mary Beth could even knock. Your friend again? She peered around Mary Beth, trying to get a better view. If this is going to be a regular occurrence, you might as well introduce him. It's not going to be a regular occurrence, Mary Beth said through gritted teeth as she reached around Edith for the iPad to sign Lucas out. In fact, Lucas probably won't be here tomorrow or the day after. Edith's penciled-on eyebrow lifted. Oh, and why is that? None of her business was what that was, but Mary Beth knew saying that would only stoke the fire. However, she also didn't want to tell Edith the whole story. She had no idea how the woman might react or who she might tell, so Mary Beth did something she rarely did. She told a white lie. It's our busy week at the resort, getting ready for the parade, and my new promotion is going to have me working longer hours. So my boss offered to let Lucas come to work with me for the next few days. It wasn't a total lie, but it still felt horrible leaving Mary Beth's lips. Edith didn't look convinced either. Her arms folded across her chest as she narrowed her eyes at Mary Beth. A new promotion, huh? Yep. Anyway, I better not leave my friend waiting. She returned the iPad to the shelf and called out for Lucas. Thankfully, he appeared ready to go today, jacket on and all. I'll let you know when he's coming back, Mary Beth said as she ushered Lucas out the door. I'm not coming back tomorrow, he asked with wide eyes. Nope, you're coming to work with me. In fact, we're going to stay at the resort for a few days. How does that sound? Perhaps if she made it sound like an adventure, he would be less likely to ask why. We get to sleep there too? She nodded. I've already packed us bags. Did you remember to pack Rexy? Rexy was a large stuffed T-Rex that her mother had given Lucas last Christmas. Since then, he and the bluish-green dinosaur had been nearly inseparable. She might have packed in a hurry, but there was no way she would have forgotten Rexy. Yep, Rexy's in the car, and Mr. Chance is taking us out for pizza. She didn't think his eyes could have gotten any bigger, but they did. What? An adventure? No Miss Edith and pizza? This is like the best day ever. Mary Beth smiled at his exuberance and was glad he didn't know the real reason. She would take excitement over fear any day. Oh, to be a kid again. Mr. Chance, Mom said we get to stay at the resort, Lucas said as Mary Beth strapped him in. I know, isn't that cool? Mary Beth tried to ignore the butterflies that took off in her stomach as she listened to Chance interact with her son. Though she couldn't see his face, she could hear the smile in his voice, and it definitely sounded genuine. And she said you're taking us for pizza. As the words left Lucas's mouth, Mary Beth realized she should have been more specific. Chance had suggested pizza, but saying he was taking them out alluded to him paying for dinner, and he hadn't specifically stated that. She should have said he was joining them for pizza instead. That's right, I am. I thought we'd celebrate your mom's new job and your new adventure. Are we going to Gitano's then? Mary Beth wasn't sure if the question was directed at her or Chance but she felt the need to jump in and join the conversation. Is there any other place? She asked, before tapping the end of his nose and shutting his door. So you still go to Gitano's too? The teasing lilt in Chance's voice brought a heat to her cheeks as she climbed into the passenger side and shut her door. Lifting her chin, she retorted, Well, 
it is still the best pizza in town. I could hardly deprive my son of that just because the place held so many memories. Touché. Before focusing back on the road, he sent a smile in her direction that caused the butterflies in her stomach to stir again, this time for a very different reason. She needed to focus on her emotional wall and sealing every chink before Chance Overstreet found his way inside it again. Chapter 17 Chance Gitano's was nearly exactly as Chance remembered it, except that the paint was a little faded, the upholstery a little more worn, and Gitano a little rounder and a little grayer than Chance remembered him. However, his booming personality had not changed a bit, which was evidenced by his loud greeting when he recognized Chance. Is that Chance Overstreet come back home? The boisterous Italian wiped his hands on his apron before pulling Chance into a hug. Gitano had always been the life of the restaurant, and part of that was due to the fact that he seemed to know every customer by name and often sat with them for a few minutes when he brought out the food. I was sad when I learned you had moved away, even if it was for a noble cause. Chance ducked his head. The military was certainly a noble occupation, but he hadn't joined it with that in mind. No, he'd been running away. It's good to be back, and good to see you, Gitano. Gitano nodded at Mary Beth and Lucas. And I see you have picked up exactly where you left off. I'm glad to see it. I told Lucinda you would end up together. Always we're the perfect couple. Oh, we're not, Chance stammered, as Mary Beth, an alarming shade of pink, added, It's not like that. No? Gitano quirked an eyebrow. Well, no matter. Everything in due time. I have just the table for the three of you. He led them to a table near the back and away from the other diners, obviously hoping it would be quieter and allow them to talk. Gitano was definitely not a master of subtlety. He handed them menus, which had been updated from what Chance remembered, flashed a smile, and disappeared. Well, what are we feeling like tonight? Pepperoni? Hawaiian? Street cheese? Chance knew how Mary Beth used to like her pizza. Hawaiian had always been her favorite, but he had no idea how Lucas preferred his. Hawaiian, the boy said, pumping his arm into the air. Chance chuckled as he nodded. He didn't know Lucas's father, but it was clear the boy took after his mother in a lot of areas. He had her same shape of eyes and bright smile but his face was rounder and his nose a little wider. Chance hadn't gotten a good look at the picture of Colin before Mary Beth had given it to Dougie, but he would bet those features came from him. Hawaiian sounds good to me, Mary Beth. It's still my favorite, she said with a small smile. That settles it then. The waiter appeared a moment later, and Chance ordered a giant pizza, an order of cheesy bread, and a pitcher of lemonade. Wow, that's a lot of food, Lucas commented with wide eyes. Chance chuckled again. I suppose it is, but there's a fridge in the hotel room if we have leftovers. Lucas's brow furrowed, and he turned to Mary Beth. Speaking of that, Mommy, who's going to watch me tomorrow? Her eyes flicked to Chance's, and he realized he hadn't filled her in on his findings. Well, we are in the process of opening a kids' center full-time at the lodge, but tomorrow it will be a very nice lady named Tiffany. Tiffany had been recommended from a local nanny agency and more than willing to come and spend a few days in the resort. Evidently, she was hoping to get her own license one day and open her own center. If she worked out, maybe Chance could hire her to run the one at the lodge. What will we do? There's the pool, so she could take you swimming, Mary Beth said. Or maybe she can take you sledding. His eyes lit up. That sounds like so much more fun than Miss Edith's. 
Can we stay at the hotel for a few days? Though Lucas didn't pick up on it, Chance noticed that Mary Beth's smile didn't reach her eyes, and he knew worry nodded her. He hated that he couldn't take all of it away, but he was determined to shoulder as much of it as he could. Dinner was much livelier with Lucas's constant chatter than Chance was used to, but Lucas was a well behaved kid. When the check arrived, Chance whipped out his credit card before Mary Beth could even offer. Thank you for dinner and for letting us stay here, she said as he dropped them off at their room after dinner. Lucas had run ahead of her into the room and was already rolling around on the bed he had claimed for himself. Chance smiled at the scene before focusing back on Mary Beth. You're welcome for dinner. As for this place, it's always available when you need it. He wanted to reach out and tuck her hair behind her ear. He wanted to kiss her, but he could tell that she still wasn't ready. I'm just a phone call away if you need me. The mental battle he could see raging in her eyes gave him hope that one day she might trust him again with her heart. He could bide his time and wait for the day, as long as he could keep her safe. Good night, he whispered, and then flashed her a wink before turning and walking away. He smiled as he counted the seconds until he heard her door close. She'd obviously watched him for a bit before stepping inside. His smile remained as he headed to his place to grab an overnight bag, but it faded as he recognized the older model truck parked in his driveway. Why was his father here, and how had he found where he was staying? He hadn't seen his father in eight years, not since the day he'd informed them of his affair over dinner and then packed up and left. Taking a deep breath, he exited his car and walked over to the truck. His father, looking exactly the way Chance remembered him, sat reading a book in the driver's seat. Chance rapped at the window to get his attention. What are you doing here, Dad? He asked when his father opened the door. He was working on forgiving his father, but he certainly wasn't there yet. Hello to you too, son. Can't a father come by to see his son when he hears he's back in town? Chance sighed and ran a hand through his hair. He hadn't felt tired before, but suddenly the exhaustion of the day fell on him. Being around his father had often been tiring, at least when his father was forcing him to work in the shop. Then his indiscretion had driven them even farther apart. I suppose, though I'm not sure what we have to say to each other, and how did you even know I was back? His father rubbed his knuckles across his cheek. I, uh, spoke with your mother before coming here. She told me where you were staying, but don't be mad at her. Listen, can we go inside and talk? The last thing Chance wanted was a long conversation with his father, but it had been nearly ten years, and talking outside did feel wrong somehow. Besides, he hoped Mary Beth would recognize he'd changed and forgive him. The least he could do was let his father talk. With a heavy sigh, Chance nodded. Sure, come on in. I like what you've done with the place, his father remarked as they entered the living room. Chance blinked at the humor he heard in his father's voice. He couldn't remember the last time his dad had joked with him, but considering the fact that he'd been here less than a week and done absolutely nothing with the place, he had to be joking. Chance had only managed to unpack the boxes that contained what he'd needed to sleep, shower, and cook a few meals. The rest still lay scattered around the floor. Yeah, well, I've been a little busy. I'm sure you have too, considering it's tourist season. Actually, I retired this year, sold my new place to a nice young couple. Chance turned and looked at his father, really looked at him for the first time. He'd sold his new shop? his pride and joy? Why? He still appeared fit. In fact, with Chance's injury, his father was probably in better shape than he was. You sold it? Why? I felt like I needed to focus on the things that really matter. His father rubbed a hand across his chin and took a deep breath. I, uh, messed up pretty badly, Chance. I thought Trish would make me happy, 
but I've realized over the last few years that I already had the things that make people happy. I just didn't appreciate them. Anyway, I'm reaching out to your mother and you because I'm dying, Chance. That's a terrible way to tell you, I know, but I didn't know how to get a hold of you before. Chance fell back into the couch. His father was dying? They hadn't had a relationship in years, and what they'd had before hadn't exactly been good? But this was his father. Death seemed so... permanent. Dying. How? His father sat down in the chair across from him. Cancer. That's always the one you can't see, isn't it? How long? His father shrugged. Six months, give or take. It's not nearly long enough to make up for what I did to you and your mother, but it's all I've got. Words still failed chance as his mind tried to process the information. Six months? Though his anger still burned, the flame had died considerably with that information. It was hard to stay angry with someone who was dying, even if they had caused pain in the past. I'm so sorry, Dad. His father shook his head. No, son, I'm sorry. I was selfish, and I didn't think about how my actions would affect you and your mother. He placed his hands on his knees and stood. Anyway, I've taken enough of your time for now. His hand trembled as he reached into his pocket and pulled out a card. This is the number for where I'm staying. I'd love to connect with you again and spend as much time as we can before... His voice trailed off, and he cleared his throat. But I'll leave that up to you. Chance knew he should say something, do something, but his emotions still careened inside him like bumper cars. As if glued to the couch, he watched his father walk out of the small house, and it was only the click of the door shutting behind him that pulled him out of his stupor. His father was dying. Chance pushed himself up from the couch and toward his bedroom. His father was dying. Someone had knifed his tire, and Mary Beth's ex might be in town trying to steal back his son. What else could go wrong? Chapter 18 Mary Beth Mary Beth jumped at the sound of the alarm beeping next to her and slapped at it through sleepy eyes. Though she set an alarm every night, she couldn't remember the last time she heard it go off. Normally, she opened her eyes five minutes before the alarm was set to go off, and since she detested the electronic sound, she would turn it off and simply get up. Somehow, she had slept longer and deeper last night. When her hands touched the soft sheets beside her, she realized why she had slept better. She was not in the bed at her home. She was at the resort, in a room where the bed felt like a cloud. Regretfully, she opened her eyes. Lucas was stretched out in the big bed beside her, a contented smile on his face. Evidently, he had slept better here as well. Knowing that she could let him sleep a little longer, since they didn't have to drive anywhere, she pushed back the covers quietly and slid out of bed. A part of her longed to pretend she didn't have to work and stay wrapped up in the sheets, but that was not reality. No, the reality was that she wasn't here on vacation. She was here because someone, probably her ex-husband, had been in her house, and her ex-boyfriend turned boss wanted her to stay at the resort until the locks could be changed and guarantee her safety. Mary Beth had always prided herself on living a simple life, but suddenly she felt like she was in the middle of a suspense novel. Mary Beth dressed and fixed her makeup and hair before waking Lucas. Her stomach grumbled as she shook his shoulder. Coffee and breakfast was usually her first stop after showering, even before waking Lucas. But she hadn't thought to grab anything at the house yesterday, and she certainly wasn't going down to the eating area without him. Of course, that brought up the issue of payment. She received an employee discount when dining at the resort, but even with it, the dining could be expensive. She should have brought the issue up with chance but she hadn't thought that far ahead. However, if she was expected to eat all their meals over the next few days at the resort, she might have to ask Chance to drive her to her house so she could grab some cheaper items. 
Cereal and PB&Js weren't glamorous, but they certainly were friendlier to her wallet. What's for breakfast, Mommy? I'm hungry. Lucas stretched and then ambled over to the small suitcase she had packed for him. Another benefit to the hotel room was that he had fewer clothes to lose and a smaller chance of losing them. With only one room and an attached bathroom, there were few places for socks or shoes to hide, even if he didn't put them where she had instructed him to. In the dining room, buddy, then we'll have to find Mr. Chance and meet Tiffany. His eyes grew wide. You mean we aren't having cereal? She chuckled and ruffled his hair. While I'm sure they could accommodate a cereal request, you are certainly welcome to have something else. Do you think they might have blueberry pancakes with syrup and maybe bacon and orange juice? Mary Beth bit the inside of her cheek. On one hand, his simple demands were cute, but they also reminded her of how much she'd failed him. Excitement about blueberry pancakes shouldn't come from the fact that she never had time or money to cook them at home. I bet they do. Let's go find out. She tucked the key card in her pocket and opened the door, only to find herself face to face with Chance, his hand raised as if he'd been about to knock. Good morning, he said, lowering his hand. I was hoping I could escort the two of you to breakfast. Yes, we were just going, Lucas said from behind her. It appears my timing is impeccable then. Shall we? He held out his arm for Mary Beth, and though her brain buzzed with questions, she placed her hand on his arm and allowed him to lead the way down to the dining room. The hostess, recognizing them both, led them quickly to the nearest table, handed them menus, and assured them the waiter would be right over before she hurried away. Mary Beth wondered if her hasty departure had more to do with Chance being the boss or the two of them eating breakfast together. The rumor mill would probably be working overtime today, but as she watched Chance interact with Lucas, she wondered if that was such a bad thing. The smile on Lucas's face as he talked with Chance was one she hadn't seen in a long time. After the waiter left with their order, Mary Beth turned to Chance. Lucas was busy coloring on a paper menu and hopefully wouldn't catch most of their conversation. So, do you want to tell me how your timing was so impeccable this morning? Chance smiled and shrugged, though she noticed a darkness underneath his eyes that she hadn't spotted before. He obviously hadn't slept as well as she had. Was it because he was worried about her, or was there something more? Is everything okay? Of course, why wouldn't it be? His words were too bright and came too quickly. Now Mary Beth knew something was wrong. There's a shadow under your eyes I don't think was there before. Chance held her gaze for a minute before sighing softly and rubbing a hand across his cheek. My dad paid me a visit last night. Your dad? Mary Beth blinked in shock. She didn't think he'd even spoken with his dad over the past eight years much less let him know that he'd returned. Yeah, evidently he reached out to my mother, and she told him where to find me. That would certainly explain the dark circles under his eyes then. Mary Beth knew how strained the relationship was between Chance and his father. What did he want? Chance glanced at Lucas before leaning closer to Mary Beth and lowering his voice. To tell me he was sorry, and that he's dying. Mary Beth's eyes slid to Lucas to see if he'd heard, but he was still coloring away. What? Chance nodded. Cancer. The thing is, he wants me to forgive him so he can spend the time he has left with me, but I'm not sure that I can. I would forgive my dad, Lucas said without looking up. Mommy says he left when I was little, but I'd still forgive him if he came back. Chance shot Mary Beth an apologetic look, but she shook her head. She should have known Lucas was listening. Sometimes that boy was too smart for his own good. What worried her more was that he said he would forgive Colin. Did that mean he would go with him? Or any man who claimed to be his dad? You would forgive your dad for leaving you, Chance asked. Why? 
Lucas put down his crayon and stared at Chance with eyes that were wiser than his years. Because God said to. Pride filled Mary Beth, even as the fear remained. You're right, Lucas. God did say we should forgive, and it's good that you want to forgive your dad. But I want to make sure that you know you aren't to go with anyone without telling me first, even your dad. I know, Mommy. You tell me all the time not to go with strangers, and I don't even remember what Daddy looks like. A small feeling of relief eased the fear. She had droned it in his head enough. He might not like it, but she thought he would follow her direction if he was ever in that situation. It wasn't perfect, but hopefully it would keep him safe when she couldn't watch him. Of course, guilt crept in as soon as the fear faded. Had she forgiven Chance? It was so easy to say that everyone should forgive, but it was much harder to do it yourself. She sneaked a glance at Chance, but before she could ponder it much further, their breakfast arrived. The omelet she had ordered was better fare than she'd eaten for breakfast in months, and from the way Lucas devoured his pancakes, she knew he felt the same. Thankfully, Chance said nothing as Lucas shoveled the bites one after the other in his little mouth. What must he think of her, though? That was so good. Can we eat here every morning we stay here? Mary Beth opened her mouth to declare this wasn't in her budget, but before she could, Chance nodded. You bet. Your meals are covered as long as you need to stay here. Chance, that's too much. We can't do that. He turned to her. You can, and you will. You're staying here under my insistence. I'm not having you pay for anything extra while you're here. There definitely was a change working in Chance. He'd always been a nice guy back in high school, but he'd been the passively nice kind. The kind who never started a fight, but did nothing to stop one either. He might not have said an unkind word about less popular students, but he had never asked his friends to stop them either. Mary Beth wasn't sure he would have made the same offer back then that he was making to her now. Still, her stubborn, prideful side wanted to decline. The need to show him that she was okay and she could provide for herself burned strong within her. But before she could say anything, Lucas spoke up. Are you an angel? What? Mary Beth wasn't sure if the word had come from her or chance. Lucas looked from chance to his mother and shrugged. You gave my mom a better job. You saved us on the road. And now you are being so nice here. You're either an angel or the nicest man I've ever met. I wish you were my dad. Lucas? Mary Beth wasn't sure what to say after that. She could totally understand his five-year-old logic. Chance shook his head and smiled at Lucas. Thank you, Lucas. I think you're a pretty amazing kid, too. And I hope when I have kids that I have one just like you. As Lucas beamed, Mary Beth felt another chunk of her wall crumble away. Oh dear, was she in trouble. Chapter 19 Chance After introducing Tiffany and Mary Beth, Chance quietly excused himself and took the opportunity to head down and see Dougie. His mind had been running through a million scenarios all through breakfast, and he wanted to share them with the security manager. Mr. Overstreet, what can I do for you? Dougie asked as Chance entered the room. He pushed his chair back as if he were going to stand, but Chance held up his hand to stop him. What he had to say wouldn't take too long. Good morning, Dougie. First, please call me Chance. Mr. Overstreet makes me feel like my father. He'd taken Lucas's words to heart this morning, but that didn't mean he wanted to be lumped together with his father. Dougie nodded. Yes, sir. You have the picture of Mary Beth's ex-husband still, right? Another nod. Dougie picked up the photograph, which had been lying front and center on the uncluttered desk. Told the night shift guy, too, and asked him to keep it right here so we can glance at it every now and then as we watch the screens. Good. 
Do you know what Mary Beth's son Lucas looks like? It's been a bit, but I think she brought him to the summer cookout we had. Chance had no idea how much the kid might have changed in six months, but he wasn't taking any chances. Can you pull up the conference rooms? Lucas is in one of them with Mary Beth and Tiffany, this woman I've hired to watch him while they're staying here. I'd like you to be very familiar with his face as well. Of course, sir, but can I ask why? I don't know Mary Beth's ex, but if he suspects she's on to him, I could see him sending someone else in to get Lucas. If we're only looking for Colin, we might miss something. Dougie's eyes widened. Do you think that's a possibility? Chance shrugged. I don't know what's a possibility, but I know we are going to try to keep them both safe. Dougie cocked his head to the side and studied Chance. Does she know that I'm here? No. Chance shook his head. She'd probably tell me I was overreacting. Probably, but that's not what I meant. I meant, does she know how much you care about her? Chance gaped at Dougie for a minute, before realizing that not only did he not want to protest his feelings, but they were probably evident in his words and actions. I think she does, but I hurt her in the past. I don't know if she wants to give me another chance. Dougie appeared to consider the words for a moment before nodding. Well, I'm rooting for you, boss. Anyone who goes to lengths like this for the woman he loves deserves a second chance. Thank you, Dougie. You keep an eye on Lucas for me, okay? You can count on me. With that settled, Chance returned to the conference room where Mary Beth was giving Lucas a hug. I'll see you at lunch, buddy. Bye, Mommy. Lucas turned his attention to Tiffany. What should we do first? Well, I guess I should be glad to know he won't miss me much, Mary Beth said as she followed Chance out of the conference room. He wrapped an arm around her shoulder and smiled when she didn't pull away. Don't worry, he still loves you. This is just something new and exciting for him. And not Edith's, Mary Beth added with a chuckle. Chance dropped his arm from Mary Beth's shoulders. What's with this Edith woman? It doesn't sound like you like her much, so why do you take him there? Mary Beth sighed. When Colin and I were married, I stayed home with him. But when he left, I had to get a job. The office job I worked before coming here had good hours, but it didn't pay very well. She was all I could afford. I've managed to get him a slot in a local preschool, but not until next month. It may take slightly longer than a month to get our center here up and running, but I want you to know that Lucas will have a spot if you want it. She stopped and stared up at him. Thank you, Chance. You've been really amazing this last week. Chance wasn't sure if now was the right time, but he couldn't keep the words back any longer. Amazing enough that you might consider going on a date with me? A slow smile spread across Mary Beth's lips even as she shook her head. Maybe, but not until after the parade. We have a lot of work to do for it yet, and I think both of us should focus on that first. You want your first parade as boss to go off without a hitch. He supposed he did, but he so wanted to kiss Mary Beth again even more. Stifling his sigh, he nodded. I guess you're right. We better get to it then. Chapter 20 Mary Beth Lucas, come on! Mary Beth could not believe it was almost time for the parade. The last few days had been so busy that she and Lucas had just stayed at the hotel, even though the locksmith had dropped off her new set of keys yesterday. However, she really needed her Christmas dress, as well as a more Christmassy outfit for Lucas. Chance had graciously offered to let her off a little early to swing by her house and grab what she needed. And since she'd finally gotten her car back from the shop, she was ready to check on her house. Sorry, Mommy, Lucas said, popping up from behind the bed. I thought I lost my shoe again. He offered a lopsided smile as he held it up. Mary Beth simply shook her head. Though things had gotten lost less often in the hotel room, somehow he'd still managed to lose a glove, 
a hat, and almost his jacket once. Thankfully, Tiffany had found that near a tree. While the glove and hat were an annoyance to have to replace, the jacket would have been spendier. With his shoe securely on, Mary Beth ushered him out of the room and down to the parking lot. Ten minutes later, she pulled into her driveway. The locksmith had said nothing about the house looking ransacked, and there had been no one there the day she had grabbed her things with chance. But her heart still thudded a little faster in her chest as she turned off the engine. Work, staying at the hotel, and being around chance had silenced her fears the last few days. But now they clawed their way to the front again. Would she ever feel safe in her house again? Are we going in, Mommy? Lucas asked from the back seat. Mary Beth shook her head to clear the thoughts. Yep, sorry, buddy. As she stepped out of the car, she sent up a prayer that the house would be safe. Her eyes darted from side to side as they approached the front door, but she was proud to see her hand shake only slightly as she inserted the key. The new lock was a little sticky, but she finally felt it disengage, and she pushed the door open. Her body relaxed as no one came running at them. In fact, the house looked exactly as it had the last time. Lucas, I want you to go change into your green shirt and your dark pants. You don't need to worry about anything else because we'll be coming home tomorrow. Lucas's face fell. Does that mean I'll have to go back to Miss Edith's next week? We'll talk about it later. Mary Beth didn't want to have to take him back to Edith's either especially since his slot in the new place would open in a week and a half. She was secretly hoping she could work out a deal with Chance and keep bringing him to the hotel. But she hadn't had that conversation yet, and she didn't want to get his hopes up. Okay. His response lacked enthusiasm, but she couldn't blame him. He'd been so much happier the last few days with Tiffany Getting him out of the current situation was definitely needed. As Lucas headed to his room, Mary Beth cautiously checked the rest of the house before entering her room to change. She wished she had time for a shower, but her one from this morning would have to do. Peeling off her work clothes, she opened her closet and pulled out the long-sleeved velvet green dress she had purchased a few years back, specifically for Christmas time. She did wear it occasionally through January, but mostly it was a December-only dress, and one Chance had never seen. Heat spread across her cheeks even though there was no one around to see it. She shouldn't be thinking about Chance in those terms, but it was hard not to. He'd done so much for her in the last two weeks. Besides, as his assistant, she needed to look nice. After zipping up the dress, she grabbed her dangly red and white stocking earrings and her stretchy present charm bracelet from their nearly year-round home in her small jewelry box. With her ensemble complete, she checked her appearance in the mirror. At least her makeup had held up relatively well. A light application of a red lipstick would finish her look. Lucas, you ready? Mary Beth called out as she checked her watch. They had half an hour until the parade officially started, but she wanted to be there early enough to make sure it was all a go before enjoying the sights and sounds. Coming, Mommy! Lucas appeared a moment later with his green dress shirt on, though not buttoned quite right. Here, let me fix that for you. Mary Beth quickly adjusted the buttons, tucked in the small tail in the back that had been hanging lower than the rest, and deemed him ready to go. He'd probably have the shirt untucked five minutes into the parade anyway as he ran forward to grab candy. Oh, the candy. He would need something to hold it in. Wait here. She dashed into the kitchen, where she kept plastic bags and the few tote bags she'd acquired over the years. There was a Christmas one somewhere with a giant green tree on it. Her mother had used it as a gift bag for one of Lucas's gifts last year, and while Mary Beth had thought it strange at the time, it would suit her purpose perfectly tonight. What's that for? Lucas asked as she handed him the bag. That is for all the candy they throw at the parade. Don't you remember last year? 
His eyes grew wide, and he clutched the bag tightly to his chest. I get to get candy? Yes, but you will not be eating it all tonight. It will be doled out like at Halloween. Mary Beth loved taking her son around at Halloween, but keeping him from devouring so much candy that his belly ached was easier said than done. The first year had been easy. He'd been one, and not old enough for candy, so Mary Beth had eaten it. At two and three, he'd asked for more than the two pieces she allowed him, but had promptly forgotten about the candy the next day. She'd been able to use it as a treat for months after that. But two Halloweens ago, when he'd been four, was when things had gotten interesting. She'd thought that telling him to stay out of the candy would be enough, and she'd left it on the bar before going to bed that night. However, the next morning he'd complained his tummy hurt, and she'd found at least ten candy wrappers shoved under his bed. From then on, the candy had been hidden away at the top of the pantry where he couldn't reach it. He shrugged. That's okay with me. This is going to be so much fun. Yes, it is, she thought, as she followed him out to the car. She loved the annual parade, but this would be the first time, in a long time, that she wouldn't be attending it alone. Of course, she and Chance weren't anything official yet, but he'd already said he wanted to date her again. She'd put it off to give herself time to think, but being so close to him the last few days had only reminded her how much she cared about him. As she buckled Lucas into his seat, a chill ran down her spine, and the hairs on the back of her neck stood up. There'd been no sound, no indication that something was wrong, but suddenly Mary Beth felt as if someone was watching her. She closed Lucas's door and glanced around, but no eyes stared back at her and nothing jumped out at her. Her mind was playing tricks on her. That was all. But for the first time since she'd heard someone had been watching Lucas, she wished Colin would just approach her and get it over with. Chapter 21 Chance Chance could not believe how beautiful Mary Beth looked as she approached him in the crowd. The dark green color of her dress made her porcelain skin appear even more perfect, and he thanked his lucky stars that the weather was warm enough tonight that a heavy jacket wasn't needed so he could admire her fully. You look amazing, he said when she reached his side. The lights twinkling above them sent down an almost angelic glow, which only enhanced her beauty. And the soft Christmas music added an additional layer to the picturesque atmosphere surrounding them. Pink spread across her cheeks, but she smiled. Thank you. You clean up pretty nice yourself. Chance had been delighted when she'd asked to leave work a little early because it had given him the chance to dash home and change as well. He was glad he had chosen the red shirt and not the green one he'd almost picked, or the three of them might have looked as if they'd coordinated their outfits. What about me? Lucas asked, puffing out his little chest. Chance smiled down at him. You are by far the most handsome boy I see. What do you have there? Lucas held up the bag with a proud smile. It's my candy bag. The floats throw candy and you have to run and pick it up. His smile faded and a look of puzzlement crossed his face. Where's your candy bag? Chance laughed and shook his head. I don't need much candy, so maybe you'll share some of yours with me? Besides, I'm not as fast a runner as I used to be. His hand touched his injured leg and he bit back a small sigh of regret. Is it bothering you? Mary Beth whispered. She knew about the injury, but they hadn't felt that Lucas needed to know. Chance shook his head. It had been aching earlier due to the longer time he'd been spending on it the last few days. But the Tylenol he'd popped at his house seemed to be taking the edge off. He wouldn't have told her even if it had been, though. His injury did not need to ruin their magical night together. He would, however, need to find a new therapist soon. 
The sound of the fire engine filled the air, and Lucas bounced on his feet. It's starting! Electricity crackled in the air as the people crowded closer together. Kids all down the street stood ready in anticipation. Parents and adults clustered behind them, varying looks of awe and pride on their faces. Chance scooted closer to Mary Beth and let his fingers brush against her hand. He understood why she'd put off going out with him, but he hoped once this parade was over and their work schedule slowed down slightly, that she would give him another chance. His heart soared when she smiled up at him and laced her fingers through his. Look, there it is! There it is! Lucas's excited yell was easy to hear even over the music, but it was drowned out by the sound of the fire truck's horn. The red engine came into view, decked with green ribbons and complete with Santa and Mrs. Claus waving from the top. A fireman leaned out the window and threw candy towards the children. Be careful, Mary Beth hollered as Lucas darted forward to snatch some of the tempting treats. Look, look! He held his bag out proudly to them, displaying the three pieces he had picked up. That's great, buddy, but remember to let other kids get some, too. Chance leaned closer to her. I provided a few extra bags for the floats today. There's probably more than enough to go around. In fact, he had actually provided about ten giant bags of candy, but he could keep that part to himself. She flashed another warm smile up at him and leaned into his side. Chance couldn't be certain but he thought this might be a little of what heaven was like. After the fire truck came a float for one of the restaurants. It was shaped like a giant teacup and had Christmas trees drawn all over it. People from inside the cup popped up and tossed candy out before disappearing again. Then there was a giant envelope representing the post office. A mound with a skier atop it representing one of the ski rental shops and a float with a beautiful Christmas morning scene, representing the year-round Christmas store. Chance wasn't sure what he was having more fun watching, the floats, Lucas reacting to the floats, or Mary Beth reacting to Lucas's reactions. He could see Christmases like this filling their future, and the thought warmed him to his toes. What could be better than this? In an instant, that warm feeling disappeared. As the float for the local pet store approached, Lucas ran out to pet one of the puppies that was proudly leading the way. Before he reached the dog, though, a figure clad all in black scooped him up and hurried away from Chance and Mary Beth. Lucas's scream disappeared among the cheers and Christmas music, but Chance took off after the figure. As he heard Mary Beth screaming out behind him, he cursed his injured leg. Had he been in tip-top shape, he would have caught the man easily. But even with the Tylenol masking most of the pain, he was losing ground. Reaching into his pocket, he pulled out the walkie-talkies he had insisted on purchasing for tonight. He'd kept one and given the other to Dougie, hoping he wouldn't have to use them. Now it appeared he might need to invest in more, and additional security, at least for big events like these. He punched the button and spoke quickly into the intercom. Dougie, there's a man in black running toward the beginning of the parade route. He's got Lucas. Chance lifted the button and waited for Dougie's reply. His leg throbbed in protest, but he quickened his pace to keep the man in sight. Got it, boss. I'm heading there now from Main Street. Chance wasn't sure what part of Main Street Dougie was on, but he hoped it would be close enough to cut the man off. There was no way he was letting the man get away with Lucas. Help! Help me! Lucas's scream, though loud, was still nearly drowned out by the music in the crowd. It did grab the attention of a few people nearest, but unfortunately not in time to grab the man. Instead, they just became obstacles for Chance to dodge. Excuse me, pardon me, sorry, he called as he pushed through the crowd. He hoped he wasn't knocking anyone down, 
but he would take a bruise or even a broken bone over a kidnapping. The man slowed as he hit a bottleneck, and Chance took the opportunity to push himself even further. Lucas, I'm coming! Lucas's fearful eyes locked on him, and he held out his hand as if trying to rescue Chance instead of the other way around. Chance wished he had spoken with Lucas, taught him a few skills to help get away in case anything like this happened. Then, as if he caught Chance's thought, Lucas suddenly drew his hand back and jabbed his finger into the man's eye. The man let out a yelp and dropped Lucas as he brought his hand to his eye. A guttural scream escaped from Chance's mouth as he saw Lucas fall to the concrete and lay still. A moment of indecision gripped him. Did he stop to make sure Lucas was okay, or did he get the man responsible for kidnapping him? Thankfully, he was saved from having to make the decision. Just as he reached Lucas, he saw Dougie step in front of the man clad in black. In seconds, Dougie had the man on the ground and his arms pinned behind him. Chance dropped to the ground beside Lucas. Please be okay. The words were barely more than a whispered prayer as he turned Lucas over. Angry red scratches covered his face from where the asphalt had connected with delicate skin. But Chance saw the rise and fall of his chest. He was alive. That was all that mattered at this moment. Knowing he shouldn't move Lucas anymore until he was checked out, Chance pulled out his phone to call 911. Mary Beth had probably already called, but another call wouldn't hurt. Chance managed to punch the nine, but before his finger hit the first one, pain exploded in his head. Stars filled his vision, and the world went black. Chapter 22 Mary Beth Mary Beth arrived on the scene just as the ambulance did. Her heart sank as she saw both Chance and Lucas on the ground, and she raced to where they lay. No! Her knees folded beneath her when she reached them, and she fell to the street. Pain erupted in her hands and knees, but she barely registered it. What had happened? Mommy? Through the fog, threatening to overtake her, she heard Lucas's voice and lifted her head. He was alive? Did that mean Chance was too? Lucas? She hurried over to him. Ugly red scratches marred his beautiful face, but his eyes were open and looking at her. Are you okay? What happened? The words tumbled out of her mouth like cereal pouring into a bowl. I'm okay. I did what you told me to and poked the guy in the eye. He dropped me, though, and now I hurt. He moved as if he were going to try and sit up, and Mary Beth gently placed her arm on him. Don't move, buddy. EMTs are on their way to check you out, but you need to stay still until they say it's okay. Next to her, Chance groaned and struggled to open his eyes. Mary Beth? I'm here, Chance. Are you okay? She turned her attention to him, trying to visually assess his injuries, though she had no idea what she was looking for. I think it's my leg. There was a definite pain there before the world went dark. His hand reached for his leg, but before he even touched it, his eyes widened. Colin, did Dougie call the police? Dougie? She hadn't even noticed him, but she did now. He was just handing off the man in black to Austin Henderson, one of the local police officers who helped out at the lodge occasionally. I'll be right back she said to Lucas and Chance as the EMTs reached them. I'm his mother, so please don't leave for the hospital without me, she said to the blonde, who nodded before kneeling down next to Lucas. Mary Beth hurried over to Dougie and Austin. Wait, she called. I need to talk to him. Austin paused but kept a tight grip on the man. Just a quick word, Mary Beth. I need to get him booked. I don't need long just long enough to ask how a father could kidnap his own son. The man in black lifted his head, and Mary Beth took a step back. That's not Colin. Who is that? 
Dougie wrapped a strong arm around her shoulder as Austin and his partner loaded the man in black into the back of the car. I'll let you know when I find out, Austin said, before climbing into the driver's side of the squad car. Are you sure that wasn't Colin? Dougie asked. I know he didn't look much like the picture you gave me, but it has been a few years. Could his appearance have changed? Empathy filled his chocolate brown eyes, but she shook her head emphatically. It might have been a few years since she'd seen him, but she'd been married to the man. She knew what he looked like. That wasn't him, Dougie. But why would anyone else want to steal Lucas? She had thought the idea of Colin trying to steal Lucas was bad, but this feeling was much, much worse. I don't know, but I promise you we'll find out. Ma'am, we're ready to load up over here. Are you coming? Mary Beth looked to where the blonde EMT was waving her over. Go, Dougie said. I'll take care of things here. Mary Beth nodded and hurried into the ambulance. It was a tight squeeze with both gurneys inside, but she managed to find just enough room to sit before the sirens filled the air and the ambulance headed toward the local hospital. This was certainly not how she'd imagined spending the evening. When they reached the hospital, she was ushered toward the nurse's station to fill out paperwork, while Chance and Lucas were examined. Can't this wait? she asked the stern-faced woman behind the desk. No, we need to have the medical information filled out. But I don't know all of this. Frustration was creeping into Mary Beth's voice, and she took a deep breath to try and calm herself. Look, I just got the insurance two weeks ago. Can I give you the human resource person's name at my work? I'm sure she has this information. The nurse narrowed her eyes at Mary Beth and opened her mouth as if to object again, but Mary Beth didn't give her the chance. Please, it's my son in there, and he's only five. That seemed to have an effect on the woman. All right, she said with a sigh. Write down the name and number, and I'll call them to get the information. Thank you. Mary Beth quickly scribbled down the information she knew and handed the papers to the woman. Then she hurried to the room Lucas was in. The doctor met her at the door. Your son is fine, a few scratches and a mild concussion. We'd like to keep him overnight for observation, but he should be fine to go home tomorrow. Relief flooded Mary Beth. Can I stay with him? Sure. The couch in the room isn't the most comfortable, but you're welcome to stay. Your husband will also be kept for observation. It appears he developed a blood clot in his leg from his previous injury. We've got him on blood thinners, but we want to make sure there's no adverse reaction to them. Mary Beth thought about telling him that Chance wasn't her husband, but that small detail seemed so unimportant with everything that was going on. Her boys were alive, injured, but alive. She sent up a thank you to God before thanking the doctor and continuing to Lucas's bedside. How are you doing, buddy? She asked as she took his hand. My face and head hurt a little, but I'm okay. She smiled softly as she smoothed the hair from his forehead, careful to avoid the scrapes. I'm so glad. You have to stay in the hospital tonight, but I'll be right here with you. He nodded, and then his lips pursed. Mommy, who was that man, and why did he take me? Mary Beth shook her head and swallowed to keep the tears locked behind her eyes. I don't know, buddy, but I promise you that I'll find out. It was after nine before Lucas fell asleep, and Mary Beth took the opportunity to sneak out of his room and check on Chance. She hoped he would understand why she hadn't come in earlier. The TV in his room played some new show quietly, but Chance's eyes were closed. She didn't want to disturb him, but she wanted him to know she'd stopped by, and she wanted to thank him. He'd risked his life to chase after Lucas, and the thought of what might have happened to him if Chance hadn't been there was too much to bear. You can come in. I'm not asleep. Chance's eyes opened, and he tossed her a crooked grin. You little faker, Mary Beth said, swatting him lightly on the arm. With a speed she wouldn't have expected. 
his hand reached out and grabbed hers. I had to make sure you got close enough that I could hold on to you. His smile widened as he tossed her a wink. You saved my son. You don't have to trick me to hold my hand. Though she hadn't meant them to sound so sobering, they wiped the smile from Chance's face, and he held her hand against his chest. How is he? Mary Beth sighed and sat on the edge of Chance's bed. As scared as she was, there was something about being near Chance that gave her strength. Physically, he'll be okay. Mentally, I'm not so sure. He asked me why someone he didn't know would take him, and I didn't have an answer. Chance's expression folded in confusion. What do you mean? I thought Colin took him. Mary Beth shook her head. It wasn't Colin. I don't know who that man was or how he knew about us. Chance squeezed her hand tighter. We'll find out, Mary Beth, and I promise that I will be there every step of the way to protect him. I appreciate that, Chance, but that might be a little challenging in your current condition. She flashed him a lopsided grin, surprised that she could tease at a time like this. My legs might be a little slow for a few days, but don't underestimate my strength, woman. With that, he tugged on her arm until she fell against his chest. Mary Beth smiled as her face stopped inches from his. I'll never underestimate you again, Chance Overstreet. She wasn't sure exactly when the last of her wall had fallen. Maybe it was the day he began taking care of her. Maybe it was seeing him interact like a father with Lucas the last few days. Maybe it was watching him risk his life to save her son tonight. His eyes twinkled as he stared into hers. Does that mean you'll finally go out with me again? She couldn't help but chuckle. Yes, I'll go out with you. He brushed a strand of hair back from her face. I'm sorry, but I don't think I heard you correctly. Did you say yes? She brought a hand up to caress his cheek. Yes, I said yes. And after what you've done for us, I'll spend as much time taking care of you as you need. I'm going to need a lot of time, he said in a husky whisper as he pulled her closer. Maybe a lifetime of time. Her heart sped up as she caught the implication of his words. But before she could respond, his lips were on hers. Warmth exploded within her, radiating to every limb like a tidal wave. It wasn't the kiss she remembered. It was infinitely better. The last time they'd kissed, they had both been teenagers. Sure, they were in love, but with no idea of what love really meant. Now they were older, and they had experienced life and heartbreak. Eight years of unsaid words passed between them with that kiss, and Mary Beth knew there was no turning back now. I better get back to Lucas, she said when the kiss ended. Her breath was uneven and her head swam, but she knew if she didn't leave now, she might fall asleep, safe and secure in Chance's arms. While there might be a time for that in the future, right now she needed to be with her son in case he woke up in the middle of the night. Chance groaned in frustration, but she knew he understood. I'll be back for you in the morning, and Chance, thank you. The couch in Lucas's room was as uncomfortable as the doctor had claimed, but Mary Beth barely felt the lumps as she replayed the kiss over in her mind. Christmas was still a few days away, but she was pretty sure she'd just gotten the best present ever. Chapter 23 Chance Christmas Day dawned cool and crisp. Chance had never had the time to decorate his house for Christmas, but after hearing about his daring rescue and resulting hospital stay, his mother had taken it upon herself to decorate for him. Thankfully, she had done it tastefully. The atmosphere was warm and inviting without being tacky. Chance smiled at the scene in his living room. Lucas had opened his stocking and was now playing with a few of his new toys on the floor near the tree. Chance did not miss the longing glances the boy shot at the presents still beneath the tree. 
His mother sat on the couch next to his father, something Chance had never thought he would see again. Though he hadn't been sure about having his father share Christmas with them, the recent scare with Lucas had driven home how precious life was and how it could be changed in an instant. After discussing the idea with his mother, who agreed, Chance had extended the invitation. He was still working on forgiving his father, but this felt like a step in the right direction. Thankfully, Butch was managing the hotel today, because the thought of the three of them together still felt uncomfortable. Who wants more coffee? he asked as he pushed himself out of his chair. Oh, no, you don't, Mary Beth said taking his mug and pushing him back into the chair. The doctor said to stay off your leg as much as possible until tomorrow, and I know you've been walking around when I'm not here. She had him there, but it was hard to do things he needed to get done without walking on his leg. As it was, Mary Beth had stepped in for him at the resort for the last few days. The doctor had said he could return after Christmas, but only if he continued to take it easy. Fine, thank you. He had just lowered himself back into the chair when a knock at the door sounded. I've got it, he hollered, pushing himself up and toward the door before Mary Beth could stop him. Chance had no idea who could be at the door, as everyone he'd invited was in his living room, but he was glad for the opportunity to move. Surprise filled him when he opened the door to see Austin. Hey, Chance. Sorry to disturb you on Christmas Day, but I've got some information for Mary Beth, and I was told she was here. She is. Come on in. Mary Beth re-entered the room just as Austin stepped inside. Austin, Merry Christmas. I'm assuming you're here because you have some news? She handed the mug to Chance so she could focus fully on Austin. Chance knew Mary Beth had been waiting to hear from Austin about the identity of Lucas's kidnapper. He also knew she wouldn't rest easy until she understood why the man had done what he had. He nodded, but glanced toward Lucas. I do, but do you want me to tell you here? His mother, picking up on the innuendo, stepped in. Lucas, how about you come make hot chocolate with me in the kitchen? Then we can open presents. Okay. Lucas set down his toy and followed Chance's mother to the kitchen. I'll go too, his father said, as if realizing this conversation didn't involve him either. Did you find out who he was? Mary Beth asked. Austin nodded. It took a few days. He wasn't in a talking mood when we first took him in. His name is Dirk Caldwell, which I'm sure means nothing to you. Mary Beth shook her head and folded her arms across her chest. No, I've never heard that name. So why Lucas? Turns out Dirk ran into Colin at a bar one night. After a few rounds, Colin spilled about the divorce and the son he never asked for. It turns out Dirk contracts for some child traffickers. When he realized your son might be easy prey, he got Colin to open up about your whereabouts and then stole his keys. He admitted to being in your house and following you. The good news is that he's going away for a while. And the even better news is that he gave us the names of the traffickers. I know that might not be much consolation, but this probably saved several other children. Praise God for that, Mary Beth said. Thank you, Austin, for staying on this and for stopping by to give me the information. Did Dirk say anything else about Colin? Anything about him regretting leaving his son? Sadness filled Austin's eyes as he shook his head. No, I'm sorry, but for what it's worth, I think you and Lucas are better off without him. Mary Beth nodded, but Chance could tell there was more going on inside her head. Thank you, Austin. Are you okay? Chance asked when the door closed behind Austin. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm glad to know why Dirk did what he did. I'm sad there are people out in the world like that, but I'm also sad for Lucas. How will I ever tell him that his father wanted nothing to do with him? This wasn't the moment Chance had planned, but it felt like the right moment in his bones. He grabbed Mary Beth's hands. 
Colin, was a father in name only. He's never been there for Lucas, and Lucas doesn't need to know why. What he needs is a man who does love him and who wants to be in his life and be an example for him. I want to be that man. Chance dropped one of her hands to reach inside his pocket. He pulled out the black velvet box that he'd kept in a drawer of his nightstand for the last eight years. It wasn't the ring she deserved, and he had no idea if it would still fit, but it felt right to propose with it, as he'd once bought it for that very purpose. He flipped open the lid and smiled at her. I'd get down on one knee, but I'm afraid I might have a hard time getting back up. She chuckled and wiped a tear from her eye. I'm pretty good at pretending. Me too. Mary Beth, I made the biggest mistake of my life leaving you eight years ago, but I never stopped loving you. I know we haven't been back together long, but I've seen my life without you in it, and I don't want to live like that. Please tell me that you will make me the happiest man alive and be my wife. Though he was almost certain she would say yes, he found himself holding his breath until the word escaped her lips. Yes, Chance. Yes, I'll marry you. He barely had time to place the ring on her finger before she was in his arms and pressing her lips against his. Did I hear someone say Mary? His mother asked, poking her head into the room. Reluctantly, Chance broke the kiss, but kept Mary Beth close to his side. Yes, you did, mother. Mary? Lucas's grinning face appeared behind Chance's mother. Does that mean you'll be my dad? If that's okay with you, Chance said. Okay with me? This is the best Christmas ever, Lucas shouted. Chance smiled before turning back to Mary Beth. The commotion around them seemed to disappear as he stared into her eyes. I couldn't agree more, he said softly, before claiming her lips once more. The Epilogue Six Months Later Chance Are you ready for this? Chance turned from the mirror and grinned at his friend and best man Israel. Though it had been nearly a year since he'd last seen his friend, he'd barely changed. His expression was a little more serious from the horrors of war he'd witnessed, and the scar from the accident, though faded, was still visible near his eyes. But his eyes held the same kindness they always had, and his smile was just as friendly. I've been ready for this day for a long time. He might have only proposed six months ago, but he'd loved Mary Beth for a lot longer than that. I'm so glad you were able to make it in for the wedding. When he'd reached out to Israel, he hadn't actually expected the man to show up, but there was no one he'd rather have standing beside him as he said I do. Are you kidding? I wouldn't have missed this for the world, but I do have to ask. Israel leaned closer as if sharing a secret. Who was the blonde woman at the reception dinner last night? The blonde? Chance tried to think back to the previous night. Butch had put together an amazing reception dinner for Mary Beth and himself at the lodge last night, and nearly everyone who worked there had been in attendance, along with Chance's mother and Mary Beth's mother and stepfather. Chance's father had unfortunately passed a month earlier, but Chance had found forgiveness for him before he had and his father had found God. Yeah, the one who helped out with Mary Beth's son. Ah, that narrowed it down then. That's Tiffany. She's the head of our child care center here. It had taken a few months, but the Patriot Peak Child Care Center was finally up and running. And because of the amazing job she had done with Lucas, he'd offered her the manager position. The center was thriving now, and they even had a wait list going. Is she single? Chance lifted an eyebrow. He'd rarely heard Israel talk about women. As far as I know she is. You looking for a relationship now? What happened to not while you were in the army? That's just it. I'm getting out, man. My time is almost up, and after seeing how happy you and Mary Beth are, I just feel like it's time for the next chapter in my life. 
Chance couldn't stop the smile that spread across his face if he tried. Well, Iz, you'll always have a place here. And since you know the manager, finding a job shouldn't be too hard either. In fact, I would like to start hiring more veterans here. It's not always easy to get a job when you get out. Military life is just different, you know? It certainly is. The door opened then, and Dougie stuck his head inside. He'd agreed to be one of Chance's groomsmen as well, but he was also serving as time manager and making sure everyone was in their place when they should be. You two ready? The preacher is here and waiting on us. Chance took one final look in the mirror and nodded. We're ready. The chairs were filled with friends and family, and nearly every employee at the hotel who wasn't stuck working today. But Chance didn't feel the nervous bunching in his stomach until the first chord of the piano was struck and the back doors opened. Lucas entered first, a huge smile on his young face. His tuxedo looked like a miniature version of Chance's, and he held a black satin pillow in his hands. Though the ring was tied to the pillow, Lucas kept his eyes on it the whole time as he walked down the aisle. Tiffany came next, beautiful in a soft pink dress that hugged her curves and barely touched the floor. Chance sneaked a glance at Israel and was not surprised to see his eyes locked on the blonde. If his friend stayed in courage, he expected a new romance might be on the horizon. Mary Beth's friend Holly came next. She also looked stunning in her pink dress, but it was the clear look of love on her face for her best friend that made her even more beautiful. Finally, the music changed, and every head in the room craned to get the first glimpse of the bride. Chance had always found Mary Beth gorgeous, but when she walked through the doorway, his breath left his lungs. Her white dress flowed to the floor, making her look like an angel floating down the aisle instead of walking. Her strawberry blonde hair was piled elegantly on her head, and delicate flowers lay strategically placed in her hair. He still hadn't fully caught his breath when she reached him, and he was not surprised to see his hands shake slightly as he reached for hers. The preacher began his spiel, but Chance didn't hear it. All he could think about was the perfect woman in front of him, the woman whom he'd almost lost, but who God had brought back to him. He knew then that he would do whatever he could, not only to protect and cherish Mary Beth and Lucas, but to go wherever God led him. They exchanged vows and then traded rings, and then Chance waited for the words he'd been longing to hear for the last six months. I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. No words had ever sounded more heavenly to Chance as he pulled Mary Beth to him and placed a kiss on her lips. Cheers and clapping erupted in the room, but Chance barely heard them. This was the day he had waited months for, and now he got to call Mary Beth his wife. Taking her hand, he led her down the aisle and out the door. The reception would be taking place in the lodge dining room in about half an hour, but they had a few moments they could steal together as husband and wife. He led her into the conference room they had been given and kissed her again. Thank you for making me the happiest man in the world today, he whispered in her ear. You're welcome, but don't think it comes free of charge. The teasing lilt in her voice not only drove him crazy, but piqued his curiosity. Oh yeah? What else do I owe you? Her eyes twinkled as she wrapped her arms around his neck. Well, I always told you I wanted two boys and two girls. I've only got Lucas, and I'm not getting any younger. Chance chuckled and nuzzled her neck. I can't guarantee in what order you might get your wish, but we can start as soon as we get home. Right now we better get to our reception. Our friends are waiting on us. I suppose we better, but before we go, I just thought I should tell you that I love you, Chance Overstreet. Chance smiled and slid his thumb across her lips. And I love you, Mary Beth Overstreet. As he kissed her again, he knew he would never get tired of hearing or saying those words, not for as long as he lived. The End 
Want to find out if Israel finds love? Be sure to pre-order Her First Love, coming soon. Also, if you loved this story, please leave a review. It really helps. This has been a reading of Her Second Chance, a Christian veteran romance, written by Lorena Hoops, copyright 2020. Narrated by Lorena Hoops, audio copyright 2020.